school is in session. Welcome to the Chop Shop. I am Eddie James. Next to me is my brother from another mother, DJ React. Hello, good sir. Peace, brother. Peace, peace. Man, school is in session. That is right. We are we are here in the presence of an influencer, a uh, talented, super duper talented producer, songwriter, MC. I mean, I mean, come on, man! Motivator, innovator, <laughs> oh, man! And I can't wait to uh, to actually pick this guy's brain. Pause. <laughs> about, about everything. Not even a minute in, we're pausing already. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hailing from Inland Empire, California. The one and only Curtis King, people. Yes, yes, y'all. You don't <laughs> stop. Keep on to the show. What's up, man? Oh, man, I can't call it. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, dude. Oh. Happy that you made it, man. Happy that you made it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So we, just to we, clarify, the, the, the intro that you're playing, that's, that's actually from the... Um, we did an alternative version of, of a project, Storm Symphony, and that was the that's the melodic, the uh, the melodic compositions that I sampled for the actual project. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a whole other project that that is the, the one one. That's the one that we that, that we're really focused in on. But that was kind of like an extra bonus for the uh, producers out there that want to use that. So did, did I download the wrong one? No. Nah. Okay. No, nah, it's right. in the same pack, bro. Huh. Yeah, it's in the same pack. Go to the band yeah. camp and buy the shit, people. Yeah, yeah it's not playing. CurtisKing.bandcamp.com. So, uh, but yeah, no, I appreciate the invitation and, and you know, I'm glad to chop it up with you guys. Yes, yes man. Oh, man. Um, man. The, the, before we, we started talking, um, I mean, before we started recording, I want to say that, um, you know, shame on me because um, I, did, I did not. There's so many talented people out here in the world and you just can't I, I mean i just can't wrap my head around you know getting at everybody you know like and listen i listen to a lot of music we're both djs react and i and um i came across your page not for music actually it mm -hmm. was you, you you gave a gem and it and i was like somebody reposted the gem about that you said about 40 year olds in hip hop. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and, and it struck a chord and I, and, and I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm following this guy right away. Not knowing that, you know, you had already, you know, paved the way musically as a producer, MC, songwriter, um, you know, influencer on YouTube, the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, man, I'm following him, and then um, the homie House Shoes, man, he was like, "Oh yeah, y'all got y'all got Curtis." He was like, "Yeah." Shout out to House Shoes. <laughs> yeah, peace to Sh Uncle Shoes, man. Yeah. So, um, thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. Um, speak about your uh, you know, we have to cover the music before we get into the nitty gritty because, uh, like I said, people, this, this school is in session for real. This 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 man does not play. Am I right? React. Yeah, you're correct. Sorry, it's fucking hot in here, and I'm sweating. I'm gonna have to take my, <laughs> I'm gonna have to take my sweater off. Yo, first of all, this guy, this guy is either hot or like or super Dog, freezing. I, in I there. can't what figure it out, man. <laughs> first of all, it's a garage. It's the, it's, it's a garage turned studio. You got menopause so like, up in there, you know, oh, man. I got I got a oh, shout out to Belief uh, NY. I'm wearing one of their hoodies, but it is like a real thick hoodie, and I'm like, it's fucking hot in here. So <laughs> I might have to take this shit off, man. So. Um, yeah, you you are a machine, uh, Curtis. Uh, first of all, um, we we know your government name. How how, how did you become to, uh, Curtis King? I want to know that. Sure. So Curtis King is it's two stories. There's one okay. short short story I can make. That's the real story. But the other one I had to redefine it. The real story is 
Um, well, actually, no, let's start with the fake one. So the fake one, it's not really fake, but let's get into it. Uh, <laughs> I went to a middle school called Curtis Middle School. It's probably one of the only times you're going to see Curtis spelled with two S's. It's in Carson, California. Uh, Curtis was a pilot, right? Uh, Glenn Curtis, I believe his name was. But um, I met a buddy of mine that I started making music with that went to another school in the area called King Drew. And so he and I both came together and, and uh, mm. actually I mixed both of those together. I mixed. So forget it. Here, here's here's a story. Here's a damn story. Here's a damn story. Right, 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 all over the place. So basically he went to King Drew. We went to Curtis together. We linked back up and was like, yo, hey, we should form a group. We should do a whole Neptunes things because he was a producer. I was a producer. He was more of a classically trained pianist. Mm. And um we decided Curtis King was a good combination of the two. However, when he eventually left, I had to redefine it. And I, th I thought about who I was at Curtis Middle School. And it's so much the opposite of the things that you outline for your audience and let them know what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I was not outgoing. I was not outspoken. I was not influencing a damn thing. I wasn't. I was barely talking to my to my friends at that. But uh, it, it was always at the surface. And so. I had a lot of insecurities. When I conquered those insecurities at Curtis Middle School, I became Curtis King. So that has been the kind of conversation, the dual conversation that happens. Anybody who gets my book knows it's, there's two versions of that. But yeah, that's the story. Oh, we have a book. Yes, yes. Wow. Oh, I didn't even add. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's an author as well. <laughs> what a gremlin. Gremlin. Holy crap! I'm I'm getting the book tomorrow. Yeah. And there he goes. Don't you just love it when when they just they just, it's you know, the flex. Nah, the I usually flex. have. Nah, I usually the have. flex. But like, nah, yeah, motherfucker, I got a book too. It's in the other room. It's in the other room. But no, it's called the Prosperous Hip Hop Producer, and huh. um, the whole idea that I mean, we could talk about that obviously, but that got presented to me because of me making YouTube videos that the mm -hmm. the uh, publisher felt like were out of the norm for that time period. I wasn't making tutorials. I wasn't making kind of the things that. I guess uh, most uh, producer, artist, musician, content creators were making. I was focusing on mental health. I was focusing mm -hmm. on the idea of what, is it, what does it mean to give true value. And uh, I had read a book called The Go-Giver. And when it mm -hmm. defined through this fictional story what value is, I understood why I kept hitting a ceiling in my career. And when I flipped that switch, that started my YouTube uh my youtube career my youtube video content creation career mm -hmm. and the publisher approached me and said i think you may have a book ready to write and you don't even know mm -hmm. it hmm. man and, uh, you said it, you said the content up. career because I'm, I'm 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 super intrigued about because yeah I'm, yeah i'm I'm not a i'm not um a, an avid reader but i am on i am a fanatic on audible Oh, yeah, I got yeah, I, I just, we got an audio book too. I did I I narrated that that whole oh, twenty it's about twenty twenty two twenty three hours at, of narration. But uh, I narrate my own story in that audio book as well. So there's a Name version that book of, again because I'm buying it right now. I appreciate it. The prosperous yes. hip hop producer is the, the name prosperous of it. hip hop producer. Yeah. Or you can go to musicproducerbook.com and it shows up on Amazon. There you go. But don't worry, we're gonna put all the links too in the show description prosper no just play <laughs> <laughs> spell it yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah if it was up to me it probably wouldn't have been that long but it's part of a prosperous series by the publishers and that was the only one of the only stipulations they wanted to make sure that they kept that prosperous series going it's like the prosperous coach the prosperous consultant and the prosperous hip-hop producer and so got to tell my story in that man wow i am i am so happy <laughs> because yo trust me i'm i am a i am a i am a um audible junkie man like for real i'm wow. gonna get the phone like, call at like 2 30 tomorrow afternoon new york, this book new york is city crazy. time or i'm gonna get the, or i'm gonna get the text yo with like 10 exclamation points yeah and then five minutes later i'm gonna get the phone call like yo this shit is crazy oh, yeah. well i mean i mean I, I process the um the information um you know hearing it better you know, mm -hmm. same I mean, here, same yeah. here. I, I'm, I mean, I, if I'm not in front of a computer or working on some of these things that take multiple steps, I can find myself falling asleep pretty easily. My yeah. body finally catches up. So aud audibles, uh, the audio books, like right now I'm reading the, uh, the 50 cent, 50 oh. cent. Boom. 
I forget which it, one this one is. Um, I think I looked past that one. Um, it's only the, actually, that's the first motivational self-help book that I've heard. It's called Hustle Harder that actually yeah, still, Harder, yeah. that still has um, shade in it. I've never heard a motivational book that still <laughs> offers shade for anybody that's an enemy of his. It's 50. It's that's definitely that's shade. Bro. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. like, thank you. You know, I'm somebody yeah. who's read the Les Browns and the Tony Robbins, and that's a certain type of brand of motivation. With, with him, it was yeah. like, he, he'll just be telling a story. and He'll be like, let's take Floyd Mayweather, for example. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, didn't man, yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't ask for specifics, but now that we're here. <laughs> We might as well talk about it then, 50. Yeah, I mean, like, man, like, we, we were, um, I mean, I, you know, I'm telling you right now, um, I went through um, Viola Davis's um, mm. memo- okay. memoir. It's crazy. If you want to be inspired, people, I'm telling you right now, her memoir, um, man, talk about from the dirt. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the, I mean, I'm surprised that she's alive. Mm-hmm to this day so Definitely yeah true. man so 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 curtis curtis king um high school uh you and the homies and then then did, did he give you the name or did he just drop off or you know um, no nah, it, it, it was one of them situations where he kind of had some things going on in life and music just wasn't a priority anymore after those things in life and mm-hmm. i <laughs> i found this out about a week after i got it tattooed on my arm so <laughs> Curtis King He's is like, just sitting on my arm. I'm like, yo, this is for life. Let's go. Like I, I had already had aspirations first to be an artist. Really wasn't into production at that time. It was really about like production was out of necessity. Right and that yeah. I didn't want to become the producer, but if I didn't produce, we would still be getting stuff off of Bear Share and and Napster and whatever is available to us, right? And so yeah. it it dawned on me that I I started off in a group way before that group. Uh, my guy Keaton uh, has been one of my best friends for the longest, but he and I uh, started rapping and I downloaded all of these instrumentals like, you know, mm-hmm. Wu-Tang Cream and, uh, you know, stuff by Twister, stuff by, uh, you know, uh, Notorious B.I.G. And it's like all these different instrumentals. I thought I thought I had a gold mine mm-hmm. until we started exchanging local mixtapes and we all had the same beats. <laughs> uh, I was like, something got to change here. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody got the same. Exactly. That's that that uh, price is right. Everybody had the same exact one. So then I said, okay, well, let's go lease some beats. Because at that time, the leasing business was very different than what it was. We're talking about 2002, 2001. The, the ringtone age. The ring, yeah, before the ringtone. We talking oh, about yeah, yeah. We talking about even before that. So yeah. I would ask them, and they wanted five hundred dollars for non-exclusive rights, and I was like, "We're in oh. high school; we don't have that." What do you mean? And so, you went to your pocket. You was like, "I was like, that's a I'm good a- price, but not for me. Who are you? Do things gonna pay?" So then I, I said, "You know what? I, I we'll figure out at some point." And then it, it happened to be a chance visit to a store called Electronic Boutique, which is like the first GameStop version. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we went into Electronic Boutique, and uh, we were supposed to be getting NBA 2K2, I think, or 2K3 with Allen Iverson on the cover. For the Dreamcast. And for the Dreamcast, because my homie had a Dreamcast. I didn't have a Dreamcast. I had a PlayStation. So mm. I was looking in the used section as he was in there, like kind of like, d- we, we put our money together. Like, is this what we really want to buy? Let's see. <laughs> and I, and I started looking through the, uh, the used section of the games. I see, like, Tomb Raider. I see, like, Crash Bandicoot. Then I see a game called MTV Music Generator. Ah, uh. Say hello to Nick. I mean, come on, react. <laughs> Look, react's going crazy. Come on, come on. What I tell you, brother? What I, I tell you, brother? Uh, Look, this is I the cra- second guest. I cracked it open and I looked and I saw it was a two. It was on and popping from there. I, wait, not not even not even yet. I told my boy, I was like, eh, we might have to hold off on this Dreamcast two K because this is interesting. This might be something. He like he yeah. asked me, he's like, you think it's something that you could figure out? And I'm yeah. like. I don't know, but it seems like <laughs> it seems like we should do something with this. If, if our problem is production, we want to be artists. And so we made a really tough decision. Um, I think we slap on it. You know, what I mean, he went he went and thought about it. I went and thought about it and came back the next day. We was like, we get in that game. So we got the game. I think he took it home the first day and he came back at the bus stop the next day and was like, you take this shit home. I don't <laughs> 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 he, was like, he was not the tech guy in our group. I was the tech guy, right? Yeah. And so I took it home and um, didn't stop making music for the next 
in 19 odd years. Now, obviously, it hasn't it transitioned from the PlayStation into you know computer space into the DOS, but that's what I started off with is that PlayStation game, and um, yeah, it was with some ugly recordings, but it, it, it got me started. <laughs> it was it was ugly. I do have a question. Was it yeah. the first one or was it the second one with Flex on the cover? No, 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 no. It was the first one. It was, it was the first, first one. one. Okay. I got the Flex one afterwards. That I already had a car by then. I had a little job and whatnot. Like, I was ah. like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck it. Get, get the second one, the second generation. But no, nah, that first one, man, it, it's, it's interesting because it, it definitely taught me what I needed to know about um, layering and sequencing and things that I didn't understand would translate to the program I'd eventually use, which is FL Studio. Uh, but this was kind of like visually, I think that's what kind of um, primed me to go the direction I did. Cause I, I tried to get into hardware, but at that time gatekeeping was very strong and folks were not trying to tell you, like there wasn't YouTube videos to show you how to use it. <laughs> like, I, like it was like, if you're either in the circle or you're not mm. and uh, you get shamed either way. So um, that shit yeah, taught man. me how to, that shit taught me how to like, arrange a record yeah like same. bars and you know what i mean it, it, sections it, it made you count especially when you know the 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 other dude that was in a group with me he since he wasn't gonna be the producer he was a rapper so i had to like i'll be on a playstation like you need more you need more bars all right let me go do and do this real quick <laughs> that, that, you know, yo, this like, is fascinating you know, like, my, like, like my lyrics afterwards <laughs> yo, i mean e, i'm telling is, you this is really fascinating like I'm i mean you. like we'll show i'll, sh I'll show you Please do, man. I'll yeah. show you. You can be I mean, blown you away because it was so early. I mean, this is, I mean, yeah, it's nine. I think the first one came out in like 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. yeah. I already had to, I had to 3000 by then. Yeah. <laughs> I already yeah. had the MPC 3000. <laughs> no, it's just funny because you're the first person. Actually, no, Eddie's right. You're the second person to come on the show that mentioned. That's right. MTV MTV Music Generator was my first uh, mm -hmm. introduction to actually making music, and then it was, yeah. you know, Gear after that. Actually, no, then it was uh, sorry, it was Reason after that. Okay, and then it was Gear, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Man. I think the only Gear that I did at that time was uh, the was it the Rolling Phantom my mom bought for herself. It might have mm. been the Rolling Phantom that she bought for herself, or either that or no, no, no. The homie had a Triton. So he used to bring that over uh, th that I that I started Curtis King with. He had the Triton mm -hmm. with all like the clip sounds and all of that stuff. Yeah, I was, about, I, was about, I was just about to say, did, yeah. did he show you that? <laughs> I found the grinding drums. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> they were all next to each other. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. other. Even like the drop it like it's hot. Like when that yep. dropped, I was like, oh, that's the Triton. But no, my mom had a had one of the Rolling Phantoms, and that's the one that has had had the floppy disk insert. And so I still yep. was trying to like. I was like, at that time, you got shame for using FL Studio. At that time, if you didn't know, have some kind of control over hardware, right. at least the OGs are in the Scratch magazines. Like, you were getting shame for that. And it was like, I can't afford this stuff right now. Yeah. And I didn't even come into this looking to be a producer. I came into this looking to be a rapper, be, be an artist, a songwriter. Mm -hmm. But uh, production just kind of like, it came a lot quicker than um the process of writing songs for me and a lot of people gravitated towards it my first opportunities that came came so much quicker than what my rapping was bringing man like i mean so so, so obviously you're saying like okay like all right th th these beats that for either you can't afford these beats or um you're not feeling the stuff that you're hearing so you're just like oh, i was just we might as well just create the stuff ourselves do it ourselves it we gotta figure it out like and, yeah. and it was shout out to my guy keaton because he rapped over some horrendous beats <laughs> <laughs> dogs crying and 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 yodeling type sound effects <laughs> and beats beats with no bass lines because i would record it with um I, my first microphone wasn't any kind of like omnidirectional. It, my first microphone was a operator headset from Radio Shack. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Yes, that's, that's yeah, a good right. one. You got, the, you got the one that come on this side, and the other one just rests on your. Yeah, you were sounding like this one, two, one, two. <laughs> yeah, we had the place up. <laughs> so like, I would have people that came over to my quote unquote studio, which is really just my grandmother patio, and um, I would <laughs> literally just set outside. Up, 
I mean, you literally felt the elements. Like it was the inside <laughs> indoor patio, but when it was cold, it was cold. When it was hot, it was hot. There was no controlling the elements. And plus, I had an old oh, school like my studio with grandfather. Yeah, so you, you know the elements <laughs> yes. of that. He, he wasn't, he wasn't okay with me having a floor heater in there. He was almost like he didn't want me doing music, so he was like, "I'm gonna put him through the test." So I felt like I was really <laughs> in some kind of military conditions from his doing but uh i used to have a little itty bitty mic and people would come in the studio and be like why you got two two uh uh uh, uh pop filters because i'm like do you see the microphone <laughs> i gotta figure this out i think i got two mic filter two two pop filters for this itty bitty little microphone and uh it had a cushion on top of it and i think i even put um I got. A, I bought some. I bought a plug-in called a mic modulator that could turn the sound of your mic into the into another type of microphone. So I was like Jimmy rigging everything, trying to figure it out. But yeah. uh, that microphone uh, was was one of the first times I worked with. Eventually, <laughs> my first placement was Abso. Abso came to that same living room. Abso from TDE came from yeah. that same living room in my grandmother's patio, and he didn't. He wasn't bougie about it. He rapped on that same microphone and said. All right, what are we doing next? So it's like so many things happen that I think really define the way that I approach things to this, to, to this day and that it, it's really about your resourcefulness and not really your resources. You can do more with what you have. Mm, that's so, yeah, I, I like that. It, as as React uh, still still shames me over here in my um, primitive studio. Nah, listen, I joke around. I break your chops, but it, it works. It, if it oh, works yeah. for you, it works for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a minimal, minimalist. I like same know. here. Same yeah. here. Yeah. Studio, there's more video production equipment than there is actual music equipment. Yeah. Um, and it's just like these things are. I, I have what's necessary for me, mm -hmm. and uh, even if I didn't know it, I've always been more of an artist, more of a creative. Let's just zoom out. More of a creative than I am any individual thing, right? More right. than the artist, more than excuse me, more than a rapper, more than a producer. Creative has always been like. A part of my fabric from day one mm -hmm. um but as a producer it was something that it first it stumbled upon me and then two i started to find a lot of success with it and i was like all right i gotta follow the sin of success even though i really mm -hmm. want to be writing these songs which i still did but you know production can pull you in so many directions that rapping can't sometimes yep. yeah i mean you, you speak about um talk about your mother um she had she copped a phantom um, you come from music background, mom. Yeah. Mom, okay. Speak, so speak moms, about that. Yeah, yeah. So moms brought me up in a church, mm -hmm. and I, at that time, moms was usually the choir director, or she would be the one playing the piano. She would just always be in a be in a place where she was leading the charge on music. So I was in church, even if I wasn't understanding what was going on. I was always in some L.A. church, and she would play in so many different churches. Like it was mm -hmm. like she was on tour during Sundays. <laughs> um, <laughs> But mom's like was 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 after it and was, you know, doing what she doing. And so I, I got to see her. Uh, she was classically trained from, I yeah. think, her before she like her like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw her always. Making it work through through music um, while still keeping a regular nine to five job, she would do this on the weekends. And yeah. um, I never really learned directly from her. Mm -hmm. In terms of her teaching me the craft, because she was always having to utilize it. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like having having yeah. a parent that's that's successfully doing it right now. They don't really have the time to switch gears right. and kind of go there. So, um, but no, she uh, that definitely was the the extent of my music background because my pops didn't have any of that. <laughs> was she was she was she into like? I mean, obviously the Phantom was uh, I mean, a pretty advanced uh, keyboard at the time. Um, was she sequencing yeah. stuff like that? I mean, so you she sat around. I mean, was she doing it at home? I think she just got a deal on it, and she just loved. All, she she's somebody who loves sounds. Like my mom yeah. was the first person to sit me down mm -hmm. and ask me if I could name all the instruments inside of a, a record. What I didn't mm -hmm. know is that my mom's had opportunities to go to Grambling to play music, mm -hmm. and another opportunity to go on tour with uh with George Clinton. And oh, man. She was super young, right? Like yeah. George Clinton and, 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 and Bootsy Collins have, have inquired about her 
playing, but at that time, you know, them shows was wild, and and, and her parents wasn't having that, any of that. <laughs> um, I'm so they picked, so, so they now. picked up Aunt Fiddler. Uh, got got rested, got got rested dead to Aunt Fiddler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, well, that's what I'm saying. Like she, she real like funk is one of her favorite genres. Even though now it, most folks know her for playing uh, gospel music, but yeah. moms could just like listen to something for a few loops. We were doing this uh, a few months ago because I wanted her to play something on my my home shows uh, or for some content. She mm-hmm. she was listening to uh, SWV Rain and she was just mm. she just pick up by ear and go. So mm. uh, that's always been you know, uh, any environment, even if it wasn't directly taught to me. And I think that's part of the reason. And even beyond that, even my pops, like they're both, they're both huge music lovers. They both loved, they were, they were divorced, but they both loved music, you know, in, in every separate household. Moms was into w- stuff from like Lionel Richie to, mm-hmm. to, uh, Wham, to, uh, Marvin Gaye to whatever that soul is, and my pops yeah. be on the other side with Confunction, and he will be on there with Cameo and Earth, Wind, yeah. and Fire, and Brass so Construction. Yeah, you put all of that. I never forget the time I went inside my mom's collection of cassettes at my grandparents, and really, really deep in her collection, like it was like a bunch of gospel stuff. Really, really deep. I saw a Scarface tape. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> I was like, "Hey, mama, what is this?" And she looked at me. And she said, "I like the piano on it. Now mind your business." Like, that ain't my oh. piano right there. Like, I like, <laughs> <laughs> her name is Rochelle, but that's when I call her Roro. I said, "Uh." Uh-uh. I wonder. Oh, hey, that 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 piano could have been the homie, Mister Lee. It oh might yeah, have been. that's yeah. right. That's right. Shout out to Mister Lee. It had yeah. broken glass and raindrops on it. I forget what that was, but Ooh. that was the the cassette tape cover. I never forget that. Yeah, she was like, I like the pianos on it. I said, you ain't get this for no pianos. It's okay. You was, young, you was young too, mama, you know? But See, when I grew up in the hood. <laughs> you know what I'm hey, but, but that's really dope because, um, you know, um, I, see, that's why I think that, you know, um, the difference between, you know, um, parents, because I, you know, my parents are now like older and, and like in their 70s. So my mother, when she was in the church and, I had the same similar um, background that you did um, church every Sunday. Um, she did not travel to churches, but we were in church every Sunday, um, choir practice, stuff like that, choir mm-hmm. rehearsal. Um, but the music was always flowing. And then, and then, um, you know, rap happened, hip hop happened. Yeah. Um, my parents did not give me, um, I mean, there weren't really that many curse records back back then when I started li- listening to hip hop. You know, you know, we had the you know Run DMC's, the, the you know Houdini stuff like that, and you know, uh, early '80s stuff. So, not really a story, but when yeah. I was little, you know what? The first tape uh, my parents bought me. Actually, it wasn't my parents; it was my my aunts, my my two <laughs> aunts. Rest in peace, both of them. You know what it was? What's what's that? That? We went to the we went to the Wiz. Nobody beats the Wiz. Yeah, and I picked up the Onyx tape. Oh Onyx my God! Are you wow. serious? Back the fuck up. <laughs> yep. And luckily for me, <laughs> that's why it was spelled <laughs> phonetically. Yeah, it was this right? That's right. <laughs> so they didn't know. Wow. And yeah. uh, ne- long story short, they bought it for me. We went back home. I put it in and take him the, up, break him up. The first, the first record. <laughs> Punk, you better back the fuck up. <laughs> she was like, "What is? Th- no, 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 no." Like, she took the shit out. Like, she, like, like, she, was she was like, "I was like, no." <laughs> she was like, "Me it. and Jack, the black vagina finder." Yo, dude, oh, so and funny. That, shit was crazy. So, oh. so, so I was saying that my my mother, um, you know, she, she never really was on me about. Okay, I know parents that. You know, with producers and, and artists, they, they just didn't let their kids listen to secular music. So they, they had to, you know, hide it and stuff like that. My parents gave me the freedom. Um, and plus, like like your like your mom and like, like your mom and dad, you know, they had, you know, I grew up on off the same stuff too. Earth on the Fires, the, you know, um, and then, you know, it became the soft jazz stuff and, you know, like mm-hmm. Gerald Albright and. You know, Najee and stuff like that. You know, so like Najee, my pops played the uh, he played the mess out of Najee. <laughs> right. uh, 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 what is it? Uh, the the dedication he did to Stevie Wonder. Oh, yes, my gosh. fly album. So 
yeah. um, they 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 never gave me. Plus, we're a D. I was a DJ, so they was like, "We make money." Uh, like, yeah, so they gave me the, the room to do that, man. That's I, lo- I love to to hear about um, you know artists like yourself and um, that their parents, uh, your parents allowed you to you know to do that, you know. Uh, it's not the the, the, the true. It's not the full. It's not the full story. I mean, it it, it moms <laughs> moms was very open to that, right? Moms okay. was like a lot more encouraging of it. Pops was kind of like, you know, he 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 had so many transitions from, you know, uh, uh, working in insurance to like. Uh, owning his own business, and as he kind of got deeper into the entrepreneur space, and then eventually the the teaching space. Right. Oh man, he he shifted because I I remember a time period where we would play like, or he would play um, Ice Cube and N.W.A. and like, mm. and 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 uh, you know, some of that stuff. But then it would just start to slowly shift, and I guess the older I got, it's probably what happened. But yeah, he he was he Not was probably it. the most he was probably the most adamant against me having a career in music and uh wow. it took years before you know i found some undeniable success before he was more open to the idea but yeah mm-hmm. it, it it wasn't a it wasn't a free-for-all in the households like that would be, i'll be telling a bow-faced lie if i said that my mom <laughs> was a lot more um it's a lot more open about these things but, what, but 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 more importantly man when i think about um you know like you know when it comes to you know, secular music. I mean, there's the parents, and then there's the grandparents. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they I, had, I, I they, they had stuff, a, too. They had stuff, too. Like, I mean, I'd never forget. I found him my grandfather's selection. I found mm-hmm. him, but I forget the dude's name. But it's, I put this record on. He said, I'll be stroking. stroking. Oh, yeah, Clarence Carter. I was like, Clarence yeah. Carter. Clarence Carter, and he cursed on that record. Clarence shit. Carter, Clarence Carter, Clarence Carter, Clarence Carter. Ooh, <laughs> shit, Clarence Carter. That that record, stroking, bro. I stroke it to the yeah, yeah man. I that was a- why there were certain vinyls that were stacked on top of each other, and then you get to like the real like the, the real like oh this is this is like seventies playboy yeah. style type stuff huh? <laughs> yeah like that nitty gritty because Clar- clarence was on you know i mean like we shit back in the days like the, we had the, cur- the first curse records i heard were like uh this guy was like um blowfly blowfly yeah. was like an mc yeah but he yeah. was like rap it was like rap dirty i think the record was called rap dirty or something <laughs> like that and it was like this is blowfly the master class and I'm going to sock some soul to your ass. Oh, man. Like, he, like the record was crazy. And we would just be, like, you know, playing it low and shit. My phone mm-hmm. was like, what are you mm-hmm. listening to? <laughs> but my pops had, like, Richard Pryor records and stuff. Right, like right, right. Cheech and Chong records. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, man, it's, it's, I just love to hear that, man. Um, the, the wonderful gumbo, um, you know, that makes who you are. Um, so, I mean, so we can, fa- I guess we can even fast forward to, like, yeah. um, you know, um, you you mentioned Ab Soul, um, and uh, there was a record I think it was like Watch It Watch It Later or something like that, and with a young K Dot, yeah. Um, um, and you guys were all about, I mean, probably the same age and stuff like that. Did you notice the greatness with with Ab? Because Ab's a, a, a cre- incredible, oh, yeah, absolutely. From that first time he came over to my grandmother's patio, mm-hmm. I recognized what what sounded like a young Jay Z. Like when I thought about reasonable doubt when i thought about like the the uh the technical skill mm-hmm. that he held the attention mm-hmm. to detail the 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 way he would kind of like bend approximate rhymes i knew that at a young age because i was like studying this mm-hmm. um as an artist myself but when i saw first time he came over to my grandmother's patio I, I always tell the story but uh he came with another guest of mine that i was working with my guy Grimm, and mm-hmm. uh and we were all in the same neighborhood and he brought him over and he was just like the the urban legend in in that part of Carson. Like you had heard about him, but like a lot of folks was like, man, wait till you see him cook up. And so he came over to the house and I had a beat that I already had created. Mm-hmm. And um, I was going to write a verse. I think Grim was going to write a verse. And uh, he's the only one that didn't have pa- pen and paper. And I'm just mm. seeing, looking, like, I'm kind of like, you know, I had my back turned. The, the patio was kind of met, like, set up like that. I had my back turned to my guest. And he just sitting in this old school couch that my grandfather had. And he's just like, kind of like bobbing his head. Not even mumbling. He just bobbing <laughs> okay. his head. And he got his hands over his mouth. 
And uh, I text the homie Grim, and I'm like, yo, you think he's feeling a beat? Like, I could pick another beat. He was like, <laughs> all caps, watch. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Kid you not, 15 minutes later, no exaggeration, 15 minutes later, he gets up and starts delivering this almost like I compare it to, um, I call it disjointed, but yeah. it is very connected. Like, he'll give you like a few of these syllables rest in a very awkward space and then give you a few more and make it all make sense. Mm -hmm. I compare it to like listening to like a, a, a Miles Davis solo at the end. You don't know where it's going, but everything yeah. that it lands on feels like it was supposed to land there. That's yeah. how he was delivering words. And when I saw that, I said, first of all, this is something I've never seen before, but I know in my soul, I know in my, no pun intended, I know in my soul that this is somebody that's going to be elite at this because mm -hmm. if they're operating like this, you know, uh, yeah. 1920s or whatever we were at that time like there's nothing stopping him and i think at the time he was he wasn't even signed to tde he was signed to another label called street beat and um mm -hmm. it just seemed like all you know all 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 direction everything was pointing in the direction of him being successful but the more he worked together the more i started to see just how talented he was and yeah. so he was the one that when he did get to sign the TD, I'll never forget. He was like, Curtis, make me a CD full of beats. And, um, you know, I, I float them over around the studio. And at the time, J-Rock was the biggest artist at that time. And so that's I really right. wanted to work with J-Rock. Yeah. I was like, man, that's, that, could, that, could, that could change a young producer's life. Yes, absolutely. Um, Shouts to J-Rock. Yeah. Shouts to J-Rock. Whole so TD. Yeah. He did it. He did take the CD over there. Only problem was that the majority of the beats probably weren't that good. They weren't that good, right? <laughs> um but two in particular have a great story in that the one he chose that Abso chose for his project ended up being the one he featured a young Kendrick Lamar on. And mm. that was one of the first official collabs on a project that they did together. So it's called Watch Your Lady. Cool. Mm -hmm. The second one, there was a beat that I made. I was hoping J-Rock was going to pick it. It was terrible. It was nothing but 808s and gunshots. <laughs> and that was actually the beat. What year was this? Two thousand. Four, five, maybe. I okay, so, 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 and and to to make you feel a little bit better, mm -hmm. Doctor Dre did the beat, you know, on 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 Fifty Cent, and it was just the Fifty Cent joint, um, right? With with the gunshots, the, 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 it was heat. Yeah, heat was probably the thing that inspired that idea. Now that I think about yeah. it, that was, that, yeah, that's, a, that's a good pickup. I didn't even think yeah. about it. Actually. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, yo, this is gonna be it. It's gonna be a West Coast version of it and all of that, <laughs> and so. I had and then plus I had heard uh you know the the joint with Tupac and, and Bone Thugs. I was like all of that was coming together. I was like throw the eight oh eights on it's gonna feel different. And so I did that and J Rock didn't rap on it. <laughs> but uh there was like, a young this ain't dude, I kill you. This ain't, this ain't it, yeah. <laughs> there was a young dude uh who was who was auditioning to get signed. He was just somebody who was kinda hanging around at first named Schoolboy Q. Uh -huh. The first beat that he Ooh, rapped over, over there was over that beat. And uh, he it's funny. He has it in an interview with uh, the, the good folks over at uh, the homies at Homegrown. He's like, that beat was trash. But shout out to you, Curtis. That he said, man, that's that's the one I auditioned <laughs> over. <laughs> the on. So uh, that definitely was like my initial introduction to that entire circle. Like you'll even see videos if you go back to um, uh, turn me up some with Kendrick Lamar and Ab Soul. Yes, there's a cameo you'll see if you go back. There's a there's a there's a young pudgy Curtis King that was there because the night before I was making beats and recording Schoolboy Q in, in that TDE studio. So it was like I was in that circle for a second, and then uh, eventually I moved out to the Inland Empire, and uh, that changed a lot in my life. Let's talk. Uh, what happened, bro? Fumble. He fumbles the ball. <laughs> oh, we there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? You good? <laughs> Bloop. That's a clip. I'm clipping that. One second. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I ate the studio. <laughs> Fucking camera went out, dropped his microphone. Oh my God. And I haven't even been drinking. Yeah, that's right. You're not even. Oh my God. <laughs> React. I know React's going to clown me for this one. Oh, Holy man. Holy Christmas. Oh, brother. This guy stinks. <laughs> As you could tell, we run a tight professional uh, I see. operation I see here, Curtis. Look. 
Holy I, hell. I stay on my P's and Q's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the whole, you know what's funny? In the process of that happening, it muted. I don't know how. Maybe my ass muted the mic. Wow. <laughs> the shit literally. Ah. <laughs> no, it, it, it definitely uh, picked up all that audio. So don't worry. Oh, I'm sure you're going to clown me. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like you were getting jumped. The lights went out. Like, <laughs> Mike Jones started fumbling around. It sounded like it was a, it was a fight. It's, you know, I don't know who was winning, but it sounded like. <laughs> oh, and then a fight broke out. <laughs> I'm, just making, I'm just making sure it wasn't Spotify that came at your door. Interview. Oh, <laughs> this, is what I, this, is what I, this is what I truly love about this show, man. Like, like, you never know, man. Like, I still haven't. Listen, man. <laughs> I, I don't even try to act like I'm super professional, and um, we, you know, we we're blessed enough to get the, the great artist, and uh, we keep a a nice little tight, I mean, an open forum. But hey, anything could happen, mm-hmm. and sure enough, man, In- uh, including uh, dropping your camera and microphone mid interview. Yeah, well, when I didn't drop my camera, the camera went down, and then I went to reach up for it, and then I hit the mic with my ass, and then everything just went haywire, like I got beat up. We're keeping that. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we gotta bring the James Brown shit back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I gotta, I gotta put it back on there. I gotta load it back in. Pause. Yeah, we're so professional over here at the Chop Shop. Hey yo! <laughs> hey yo! I know, man. I even lost my train of thought. But no, we, we, uh, we were talking not. about TDE Studios and Absol, and mm-hmm. yeah, young, um, young K dots and uh, Chubby Curtis in the background. And <laughs> what, what else we were talking about? Young, young no, Curtis. I know, I know. Um, I did have a question. So, uh, what? What? All that being said, like you, you're still crafting your sound. Were you? Were the? Were you? Um, a rising and budding artist. Um, at that time, um, or were you just like, you know, you know, basically, you know, hiding your record? You said you talked about your insecurities and everything, mm-hmm. you know, um, and being an introvert and stuff like that. Um, were you really like have a have you did you arrive at that time? You know, as far as uh, or were you just as an producing? artist? Not not quite. As an okay. artist, there were still opportunities that. You know, I, I I was working on now one of those major ones, which is really crazy. I don't think I've ever told this one is um, uh, not the fact that I signed to this indie label called Rockstar ENT, but the mm-hmm. uh, the label itself was headed by um, uh, engineer and producer named Star Lab, another guy named Tay Beast. So Tay Beast was one of my early early bosses and and and, and mentors into this space, and being able to be around him brought me around another individual named sky hutch and so mm. you know these are folks that now man you know their names are, are ringing everywhere because of all the, the classic records they've been a part of but at that time they were like young and, and getting after it themselves and so i was signed to a label and one of the fir- well, the first time that abso met tay beast was in a session for me as a rapper because i had abso coming in for a feature for a song that i did uh, we graduated from Grandma's Patio into a studio in Inglewood uh, with Star Lab and TDE. I don't know, Star Lab and uh, 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 Tay Beast. And so uh, they met there, and I think that's one of the first times that, you know, they started connecting on records. And so I've always, my music career as an artist, uh, as well as what I've done as a producer, has always kind of been a bridge in a lot mm-hmm. of different spaces. It's been a reoccurring theme. Uh, all the way up until, uh, you know, introducing the homie Jansport J to Hit Boy. Like, this has always been a wow. reoccurring thing, but the music that I do has always been the connection point. So the fact that Ab was doing a feature for my album called Storm on Mars um, was the reason why Tay Beast was in there because he was producing on that as well for my project. So yeah. my my work as an artist sometimes was like the the handshake. And when that was an appropriate handshake the production was like kicking my foot in the door like okay i'm i'm not going nowhere like if you don't want a feature that's fine you want some production right so Mm -hmm. uh but yeah that that it was on the back burner but bb and signed there was an introduction to structure an introduction to having help with my career because i was super diy at that time yeah and uh 
yeah, then eventually I went to another independent label in the IE called Black Cloud Music. And so um, those that's when really my career took off is when I moved, I say 2010 from uh, Carson to the IE. Everything changed for me as an artist and as a mm-hmm. producer, but more so as an artist. A lot of inspiration, too, man. I mean, you're, you're around some of the greats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, and, and when I listen to you, um, you know, as an MC, songwriter, production, everything, everything is just, uh, um, just it's super seasoned. Like, I'm man, yeah, I wasn't allowed. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to be trash. You see who I'm around? <laughs> like, I, you know, I, true. there were, there was a point in time where if you were a rapper producer, it was like pre Kanye, where you were expected to like be terrible at one of them. Right. You were expected like he, he, let him get his raps off, you know, but his his beats is really what you need to be here. The instrumentals is what we hear for. Do you for. think that they were like that with you? Um, I think in certain capacity, but once again, I was always I always surrounded myself with people that were better than me in both fields. Mm. So when I sat there to write as a lyricist, there was no Curtis King, the producer in that room. I wrote mm. to the best of my ability to keep up and yeah. uh stand out. And so, yeah, I think there was a lot of situations where it was that, especially with TD. They didn't want one of my damn raps. They they <laughs> they were there for the production, and that's and I was you know that was kind of like the rude awakening. But at the same time, I knew from the very beginning I was going to be likely I was going to likely have to go to independent because the type mm-hmm. of music that I wanted to make there was no Kanye Lane for it quite yet. Um, but when he did arise, it was like, well, maybe there's a possibility for that as well. But I had it in the back of my mind. Independence was going to always be somehow attached to the work that I'm doing, even if it's just like featuring and being a rapper independent or producing for independent artists. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that, I think it, it, it there was moments there was moments like I, I would I would get a major feature or I would have a project that charted on the iTunes and all of a sudden mm-hmm. folks are looking at it differently. Or, you know, I went on tour with MERS and then things people looking at this as an artist. So. It just right. it, it's, there's times where because I was around the best people that I know, Tay Beast is a producer where I was asking him questions on how I could be the best producer possible. That's one of the best producers I've ever met, period. Uh, Willie right. B, Ichiban Don. That's another dude I was yeah. around very early on. So it's like when the I mean, bar. Shit, you, you, we, we, we even mentioned it. I didn't want to mention it, but shit. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean this, 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 this Kendrick. I mean, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I remember being in the rooms watching him record. I remember being in the rooms watching Abso, Abso coming to my grandmother's patio. So it's like I was always exposed to mm. um, greatness, top tier, top yeah. tier greatness. And then seeing it in its very early stages allowed me to see mm-hmm. the path. Were you around uh, Soundwave and those guys as well? Soundwave's another one. Like, yeah. like I could. How, how do I come into that studio session and show Soundwave something I kind of <laughs> doodled together on FL yeah. Studio? Like, I would hold that back. But it got to a point where mm. my lyricism was starting to take off, mm. probably from being in that environment around folks who held a certain bar and. Yeah. They weren't setting that bar for me. I was just a guest in these studio sessions. But being around that and then surrounding myself with independent artists that were like that as well. Mm -hmm. And even like my guy told you, I started off with Keaton. Like from day one, you wrap your ass off or you produce your ass off. No half. There's no half ass in any of this. Are you just just quit? What are we doing? It takes too long. (laughs) Did you have that kind of I mean, did you have that mind frame or were you just in the moment back then? Or did you definitely like, had yeah. that mind frame? Like, yeah. like we were always, even in the book, one of the first chapters I talk about, we were like old dudes, like super old dudes and young young men bodies. Like we were talking about <laughs> things that when everybody was talking about Sadie Hawkins dance, we were talking about like the security of our families into the future and, and how can we secure that through this craft of music. And like we yeah. were having conversations that just didn't make sense when you said you're a rapper, you're in high school and what do you want to do? Like we weren't talking about the cars and all that. Like we had a very solid and humble plan yeah. for what success would look like and how we want to take care of the people who took care of us. And um, yeah, that's that, that is, that was from the beginning is that we were really, really driven. And, and, and I got to give a lot of credit to my guy Keaton because he was uh, a, a year or two older than me, but he would expose me to like the Tupac documentaries he would expose mm-hmm. me to like the death row red tape and seeing all of these like the work ethic of the best of the time, the yeah. corrupts and seeing how they operated. 
he would give me double egg cell magazines to study like not to just you know get inspired but to study so i've always been in a very um ironically like a very military discipline style mm -hmm. setting even within music i've always been around folks who were like this is what it takes to be the best at your craft man can we get to some music? I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, let's take, let's take a little music break. Like, no, nah, even that, man, because um, like, like you, you spoke about all the layers and all the inspirations that you had, and mm. and I now I get it, you know, and then and then you had early inspirations, you know, um, you know, Outcast, and like you were in Outcast. I mean, I believe it. Yeah, he's you know, actually so. my favorite rapper. And even if you don't want to rap no more, he's still one of my favorite rappers. <laughs> he's the best. He's the best, like not the the best, but definitely uh, top five. God, in my book, you can't. There, there. Some of the yeah. things he was the first person I listened to when I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is the conversation. Like I could have conversations like that in my music. I want to be have a conversations. A, a fly dude to say leather, leather in the summer, soak in the winter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, 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 look. No, nah, it. it uh, there's there's verses from him that I was like, if I if I, if if he's allowed to do that, it's almost like I I unlocked an, uh, a permission for me, yeah, to try things because he made it sound so damn cool over the type of beast that he that he would he would rap over. So, uh, definitely was early inspiration for me. But Outkast, Tupac, uh, Busta Rhymes was another huge one for me too, because mm -hmm. Busta Rhymes was so like. He was so adventurous in all of his production and his and his, his flow switches and like mm -hmm. concepts and even the themes of his album, Extinction Level Event and all these different things. Like, oh, yeah, those were all part of the fabric of what you hear. So if you hear something that's like that's out of character, it's like, no, that's just another part of the layers that, you know, are being unraveled. It's still part of the story. Yeah, I, was, I still don't think people really take Buster as serious as a lyricist, but I think he's mm -hmm. one of the one of animated the voices to ever do it. I think I think it really comes down to that simplistic thing. Animated yeah. voices don't usually have a place in top lyricist conversations. I think that's another reason beyond the obvious of an Eminem. I think mean, that's another reason why people try to like discredit him as well. Those over the top animated voices. I don't even know if you put them in that category, right? Because um, he's kind of the exception to the rule for other reasons, but. Uh, red man should be in that conversation mm. oh, right there's no question about um, that yeah uh, but buster rhymes i mean they, they wouldn't give it to a ludicrous because and i think it's for those they'll say things and they'll have an approach to it but i think the animation in the voice makes it like everybody yeah. it's like the hip-hop heads want everybody to sound like guru and it's like <laughs> right you know, right like cool detached i'm not really into this i could be doing a million other things like f that rap shit i listen to classical type vibes like this I think everybody wants that to be their favorite lyricist, but it's just not the reality of it. Everybody has different stories and different deliveries. Well, speaking okay. of deliveries and flows, man, man, uh, just just play it, play, play, play just give us, we're, <laughs> just play the play the heat. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been. I haven't told my wife I want to rap again, huh? I haven't told my wife I want to rap again Yeah I haven't told my wife I want to rap again Not that I need her permission But when I grab this pen I need to have the peace of mind You got my back in this You should know by now your husband ain't no average man I haven't told my wife I want to rap again After a nine year hiatus making content I don't know what she gonna say But when I drop this Honestly, I wouldn't blame her if she jumped ship Over the last few years, I took some dumb risk Almost crumbled my business and made my gut rich But I'm an entrepreneur and when that hunch hits In the name of elevation, I get sucked in I know I got a son, but is it ill-advised For me to revisit these dreams I had at 29? Would I be selfish if I brought this up at dinner time? My wife looked dead into my eyes and said, you feeling fine? I haven't told my wife I want to rap again. Mm, this is true. This shit is. I haven't told my wife I want to rap again. Yeah. React. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna listen to the second verse. And I'm gonna talk about it. When I grab this pen, I need to have the peace of mind. You got my back in this. 
You should know by now your husband ain't no average man My love, I wanna share a window that won't minimize It's a vision, you can't miss it when I bend these blinds I wanna pin these rhymes and finally make the finish line But I feel my window short like I'm filming vines It's got me thinking maybe, baby, this my pivot time I see a look of shot crawl across your face for real You probably thinking how that music about to pay these bills Oh, you's a funny ass nigga, now you Dave Chappelle <laughs> These were never your words, but I had to face the fear That you would give me my ring back like it's a souvenir She told me that she got her doubts about this new career But this passion got me smiling like some new veneers It's clear I told my wife I wanna rap Man. again <laughs> This shit is like this this might be that this is the the anthem not even about just rapping but i told my wife i want to produce again on my wife yeah. you know like I that's guess. right like try that's open, right what well, open yeah go I, I, ahead no no one point i was going to make about it is that you know how you get clear vision after you've released a project and you kind of see the headspace that you were you were in and Yes. You know, I, I have the belief that these ideas come obviously from a higher power and that you're the, you're the vehicle that they're traveling through. So sometimes right. the ideas will get laid down, recorded, written, and you still won't understand them in their full capacity until months later, years later. This is one of them songs where I'm recognizing like one of the biggest critiques sometimes of independent or if you want to say conscious hip-hop that's such an older term but like mm -hmm. is that they rap about rapping what i'm recognizing in someone who's been in the content creation space the people who are being rewarded with fans with the vanity statistics that are independent are the ones who are telling their true to life story and allowing people who don't relate to that specific mm -hmm. theme relate to the general theme yeah I so as yeah, let's see out, <laughs> there's folks right now who are like yo i want to tell my wife that i really want to get into this again or i really want to do this i was watching the, uh the george foreman movie and it went and mm -hmm. i didn't expect to enjoy it as much as i did but seeing how he was at a place where his fighting career he it was over with he was done <laughs> boxing right he, he, he was, was done he, in the 70s he was in the church <laughs> late you know 70s yeah. he, in the church he was like he was like he had a, a, a but he had a community center that a, a man that he entrusted to handle his finances had fumbled and when he did that the community center was at risk of losing it it was like one of the things that he provided in that community for those kids to go to and so him he looked at how out of out of, out of shape he was and was like <laughs> This is what I know to do. And he went there and he fought and he got the ten million dollar check, I believe, from Showtime. He did. And ended up winning. And then he saved the community center. It's such a 90s story when I think about it. But he saved the community <laughs> center and he came. So I look at it and I'm like, there's a lot of folks who it's not as dramatic as I want to have a career and and be an NBA player at, you know, at, at, at a certain age. It's a matter of like these mm -hmm. are like zoomed out. This is just about difficult conversations with your significant other which is spouse and we all have that thing to insert in that so mm -hmm. insert to that to that that topic and so i'm just like i gotta speak the truth as it is for me and this is what's making people gravitate towards me in this new phase as an artist um but i think you have to speak to those because mm -hmm. people will find their own reasons to identify with the song because lord knows a bunch of things i heard from like bands in the 80s i can't relate to but i find my <laughs> relationship with. i don't know what when doves cry means but damn it i feel it i understand it when i hear it. <laughs> right. raspberry like i don't know what raspberry berets but man i feel and i and i identify with the in, the energy and i feel like that's also something that we can't take for granted as artists is that if you tell your truth, no matter what it is, somebody's out there on the other end that can understand it and relate to it. Man, um, I knew this. I knew this was gonna be a great interview. React. I mean, oh because, yeah. Um, just to, just alone on that, um, you know, the communication between us artists, or producers, or DJs, or, any, or anybody, or any creative, mm -hmm. um, you know, who's been doing something before they met their spouse, um, you know, yeah, because um, they know you as one thing, or they've seen you as as one phase of your life, and it may not be the totality of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean. Well, shit. We this we, this is why we're here to talk about it. I mean, yeah. I, 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 
I've 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 had conversations like you know like uh like really it's it's not happening for you, mm. you know, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. in the midst of an argument, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, um, and you know I've so, I'm somebody who's played outside the fence, so yes, um, you know I, I actually you know yeah independent all sure. my life all my life, um. I would be lying to say I didn't want to be that 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 guy as a producer. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen that way. Um, so I can relate to the I can relate to the song um, in a sense of um, you know when it comes to production. I've never stopped, but I get a bite on something, and then or like in, during a pandemic. Be, Mm-hmm. Re, you know, basically reinvent myself. Yeah. Um, and we don't have the conversation. <laughs> Not even allowed to have it in general in society. Like, you know, in our relationships is one level of it, but it's like society don't even want to entertain the uh, idea that somebody after forty can can, which leads back to the other video we had that I talked about. You talked about earlier, but like, this is how I come to man. Yes, the idea of, and then it doesn't help when some of the best like a voice like a three stacks and i don't think he had malicious intent when he shared what he shared but he gave he gave voice he did two things positive and negative i feel like he gave voice to a running st- to a running stereotype to a running conversation that people were like yeah yeah that he what do you rap about at 48 <laughs> but <you're, laughs> right. the people who are questioning this haven't got to 48 yet I didn't hear other people who were at his age saying the same thing. Matter of fact, the positive thing I think he did was getting people like Jada Kiss to talk about it, the clips to talk about it. And now we're having conversations around like, well, no, I don't think that I run out of ideas into my 40s. If anything, Black Thought talks about it. He's like, if anything, now that I'm listening to like NPR, my concepts are now more layered than they've ever been before because I can have conversations on this level. That yeah. I couldn't have in my twenties and thirties, right? But you know, when you really dig into that rabbit hole, you you start to realize that's less about society and more so about the conditioning that I will say that comes from the major label system that wants to churn out um, and work with younger artists because they're easy to manipulate. And when you see the bad decisions they continue to make, this mm-hmm. is not this is no longer an opinion or just. A, this is done on purpose because it's easier to manipulate somebody who all they see is the vanity. All they see is what they could get. And when they can offer you that and you still are only getting a slight, a small slice and you think that you won everything at life. Yeah. Like you hear the kids now, like and, and I stay connected to all generations. I, like, I love all. I, I try to understand the perspective because I remember what it feels like to be 17 and feel like I wasn't understood. Right. Yeah. But. I start recognizing this new narrative of if I got more money than you, then that means I'm that I'm more right than you or that what I'm saying is more valid than you. And um, it's problematic. I think I think also the conversation around clout and the obsession that people have around clout and how they've redefined and kind of took new ownership of that word because it used to mean something completely different. 80s, yeah, 90s. Yeah, speak about it. Yeah. Um, yep. But and now seeing how these things operate, I start realizing like. The people who have the biggest voices of opposition to the idea of somebody over 40 doing their thing and writing their truths are people who haven't met that age and are terrified Mm -hmm. are people who are at that age and are terrified to try. But isn't it ironic that we're in a genre where some of these men are menaces in their 20s and 30s? They're anti whatever is the social norm. Mm -hmm. Then they get 40 and get real insecure about what they look like rapping. You didn't care about that. Like, I'm man's hanging down by your ankles. You didn't care about it then, huh? So right. it's like, it's it's ironic. And I meet a lot of my peers and I'm not clowning. I'm just saying like, that's the, the truth of it is that you built your career off of always being um, the opposite of what everybody told you was you supposed to do. And then you get yeah. to a place where now it doesn't look as cool. The optics don't look as cool or you don't think it looks as cool and you just stop. But yet and still, I look at groups like uh, Atmosphere. I look at, you know, um, the uh, uh, a slug rap about things that are relevant to him in his 40s. And his audience yeah. shows up all around the U.S., all around the world to support it. 
when how about I killer, how about Killer Mike? Killer how about Mike. that? Yeah, yeah, Killer Mike. I'm just I was just more so speaking like to like an underground, you know, yeah. in, in a space. Killer yeah. Mike is that, but then, you know, here's one thing, and, and, and I would love to hear your perspective on this. I don't want to go on a long rant on this because I just did a no, one. No, 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 you're not. This is great. This is good stuff. Yeah. Killer Mike is inspirational to me, not because he won a Grammy. I hate the fact that the Grammys validate so much about what's possible in life. And it's like when you know the inner workings of that and how political it is and how yeah. you know these things are. But that's not to discredit it. That's just to say that we knew that Killer Mike was great way before he, he, he hoisted those trophies. When you hear the story that he put, instead of doing another Run the Jewels album, he decided to invest $500,000 of his own money without a deal. Yeah. To invest it into a solo album, yeah, that's the things I look at and I say salute. That's inspirational. You put five hundred thousand of your dollars into your own solo album, even though you had a successful series with LP. That makes me like, crazy. oh, yeah. that's the crazy part. <laughs> and then he aligns with No ID. No ID like really engineers and produces this album, and he he kind of like gets them ready. He even gives them a gets them uh, aligned with a deal that puts them in the position to be able to submit his stuff off for the Grammys. Yeah. Him winning it is like, it's almost like when you think about how hard a, a, a LeBron or, or, or a Giannis works to be in the, the physical specimen they are, by the time they get to the championship, they don't, they're not, yeah, I did it. No, they're like, man, I just exactly. want my damn respect because you know how hard they work. <laughs> That's right. And so I look at that with Killer Mike and I'm like, the OG is a, is, is a, is a inspiration because he bet on himself to me them trophies don't mean nothing to me like if anything they're just they're just uh uh they just prove what we already knew about his greatness yeah um, but i understand the society's optics on it and i have a lot of like well, they, just, well just like they said <laughs> they, yeah i know but they <laughs> exactly you know it's, and it, but they got it right they got it they absolutely got it right i don't finally them, yeah. they finally got it right like um, took them how took them how many years well, I, I would say the last time I would say t um, back in 2016 or something like that when To Pimp a Butterfly came out, you know, yeah. um, but I, I think they got it right with that. My question is this. When they get it right, do we celebrate them for do we celebrate them for, for doing what they're supposed to be doing? Because I'm no. I'm <laughs> And, and Not at all. That's, Good Kid, Mad City, there was no more impactful oh album in rap God. and hip hop yes. still today. Like that shows you the real impact that him and Ryan Lewis, McAvoy and Ryan Lewis made a great cinematic piece of work. He, they killed that. There's no doubt about that. But when you think about what good kid, mad city meant for a region that didn't have an artist that was able to reach this level in quite some time and have a cultural impact, he kept doing it. So when I think about them getting it right or what, like, Oh my gosh. And then you start hearing about how, the real votes go down and how how the, how layered that is is this kind of it's kind of a thing where it's like it's you were, bs you we, we just had that grammys yeah we just had that conversation in the last episode um um at the very end and how you know they come to f to to come to their decisions i think i think that shit is garbage to be honest um <laughs> like i said they got it right with killer mike because the album um flew under the radar uh but it was not the, the obvious albums won. Yeah. Some, you know, like the Taylor Swift, we knew that. They they can't say it was based on, you know, you know, this just um somebody's magnum opus album like like no, she Taylor Swift ruled the the world for the last year. And period. A, in a Super Bowl too. Like when you're when you're climaxing, <laughs> that's All right. crazy. Like she wins the wins the Grammy and then the climax is not even there yet. She won a Super Bowl before my <laughs> Cowboys won, uh, before Dak Prescott won one. <laughs> yeah. She just go. hopped into the game uh, two a year ago and she won a Super Bowl Insane. already. <laughs> Insane. Getting back to um, just I don't want to lose focus on what we're talking about um in your song like um men we as men responsible men family men um mm -hmm. you know i've 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 had conversations or arguments and 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 i'll keep it real like you know um as if you know what i do is a hobby mm. you know but you know um like why you know why you know what i mean um and I know a lot of MCs 
um, producers, DJs who find themselves in that spot, like where they don't want to, um, they want to have that conversation with <laughs> with their with their spouses mm-hmm. or the significant others, um, and they don't, um, and maybe they should. I, I think it would it would relieve a lot of bitterness that you see in our peers, a lot of like underlying bitterness and a lot of um, condescending conversations. I, I, I tend to see my peers. And when I say peers, I mean more so in my age group, the ones that are being condescending about the idea of me restarting my rap career after uh, deprioritizing it in the name of content creation on YouTube. And mm-hmm. I still release projects like I was still, you know, a, a lot more busier than the average artist. Um, but no, I, you're very superior at it. I'm just going to tell you right now. I you're appreciate so, you. Yeah, I appreciate you. But 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 with that said, like. When I finally came back, it was like, I can operate at this level. See, go against streaming, go against do all these things and still be looked at like it's a hobby. And I started recognizing that that energy usually comes from folks who are not living in their truth, because who in here ever when you're happy, you want to see somebody else miserable? Like, how is that part of your dynamic? Like it, 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 we mix yeah. together these, these conversations are like we need to have a real talk. Like I'm, as your friend, this is real conversation. My thing is, well, it can't be one sided if we're going to have a real conversation. You got to understand also, too, that mm-hmm. there's a possibility that you may be wrong. There's a possibility I may be wrong. But what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to continue to live and do what we you know, I always say, especially if you're not neglecting your responsibilities? Yeah. If you're taking care of your family, if you're taking care of your bills and all the things that you're doing, um, yeah. who can say whatever they want to say? But I'll tell you right now, I know folks with nine to fives who are struggling worse than rappers. <laughs> right? As much as they talk about like, 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 And that's not even like to like throw no shade. That's just a matter of we're human beings trying to figure this out in our own ways. Leave the space for people to figure that out, even if it is creative. Like I put up a tweet uh, that said, you're never too old to be creative. And I, I, I pray that that's something that as broad of a statement as it is, I pray that that's something that gets normalized in hip hop. It feels like the writings on the wall. It feels like, you know, first that, that conversation has to shift in the independent space. Then it has to happen on a mainstream level for society to ab- adapt to it. And it's happening mm-hmm. when you see some of the, like the, the album of the year songwriters and uh, even like the song rap song of the year, I think had like some of the oldest uh, ages in that group. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They broke right? like yeah, yeah. So, this this year was this crazy. Year. So when you see that, and this is like you know, like I said, we don't use it as a validation factor, but it is a it is a temperature on where the, where society may be at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even some stories earlier last year that talked about uh, ticket sales are not where they were. Right? No. You got record labels that are deprioritizing signing uh, rappers over Afrobeat artists and you know world artists that are. You know, there's safer bets for them to invest the money they invest in. So, right. it's, so I think the writings on the wall, I think a lot of this stuff that's been pushed down the pipeline and the imagery, folks have been tired of it. But I think sometimes when you're great at marketing, you can convince people that you can convince society that people aren't tired of it. But what, what if you, when you follow that dollar, you start to see people are making different decisions. I'm mm-hmm. proof of it. <clears throat> people investing in me are not coming to me because. I know ratchet shit I say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, speaking of speaking of money and speaking of dollars, um, mm-hmm. you talk about independence, <clears throat> and um, it's well known that you are not a fan of streaming streaming platforms. Um, and if we're speaking about I money, got this Spotify green all in this room. What do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm going green. Shout out to <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of dollars and cents, uh, why don't you tell the people how much uh, money you earn per stream on Spotify? Zero point zero zero three. I'll make the same amount as the guy that just started rapping yesterday and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right to me. <laughs> <laughs> See, when I say these things, I get fought. <laughs> People fight vehemently against wow. me. I understand this is my place in history, right? Talk I understand that. Your, like, talk I'm your talk, shit. I'm your at that place right shit. now, right? I, I get it. I'm, I'm watching the movie from outside, and I'm like, 
oh, this is that part of the movie. Okay, where well, they're going to make you look crazy for saying something that should be an obvious statement. But <clears throat> I make the same amount as someone who just started and Stevie Wonder. We all in the same thing because that's just, that's just, that's just, you know, how she, and then on top of that, in order to flip a profit just off of the very product that should be at the center of what I'm doing called music, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a musician after all, I have to work quadruple the amount of time and quantity and effort just to flip a profit in that system too. something don't add up. The math ain't mathin'. It's crazy. Uh, and, it, and instead, hold on. Let me say what it is. Let me say that. And then, yeah. and then, Opify. Instead of saying, "Hey, you know what? We created this. Our, this system was created of stream payouts because we were reacting to the surging." piracy that was occurring at one point we were scared we were trying to figure out a system and then steve jobs came in and said this is what i want to do for itunes and we followed suit instead of updating that yeah you chose to also put together a threshold for artists that use your service oh so now shout out to lloyd lang legendary lloyd lang now you're hiring us to meet a sales quota so now instead of paying more <laughs> instead of paying what my music has generated you have a pull system yeah. in which the people who stream the most get the most of the pie so you could listen to my music for the next month and let's say your amount of streams 500 streams is 10 bucks i think it is imagine you get that amount of streams i only get about two to three dollars of that 10 the rest of it goes to all the people you thought you weren't supporting the taylor swifts the you know what i'm saying the drakes because you're like, I'm independent. No, that's that's we get a very small fraction of it because it's a pull system. Yeah. When you think of it like that and you start to realize even the people who are behind the beginnings and still Daniel Eck, the, the CEO of Spotify, mm -hmm. used to also be CEO of a program called uTorrent. And uTorrent was very well known for distributing. It was a software that wasn't his intent, but it was known for distributing music. Yep and movies illegally so then that guy gets to sell that company off for 10 million pretty sure there's some people listening who uh who used uh uTorrent for some cracked plugins <laughs> back in the look day. look i ain't gonna <laughs> tell myself but i understood what the i understood the assignment right with that said that guy becomes the ceo and then he brings on the 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 other person that's a part of the programming to be the lead programmer for spotify when i started to dig that deep it wasn't a matter of conspiracy theory or putting foil hats. I said, oh, the jig is up. So you, That's get, right. to, you yeah. get to create the reason why there's a rehab, but then benefit off of people going to rehab. You created the drug <laughs> and the rehab center. Whoa. It's a 360 deal. What ding, a hell ding, of a plan. I can't be a part of that, but I get it. So I, I, I rip. So it was a lot of things that led me to it. The, the threshold was a thing that really got me because it, it was about it wasn't going to affect me. I was going to get the stream numbers to make that threshold. It's not a big deal. Do, do, like, do other um, do other streaming platforms do the same ha have the same type of uh, layout, I guess, or structure? Mm -hmm. So there's one called Deezer that is experimenting. They're all oh, trying yeah. to figure out how to like get their money back because with the introduction of AI, one of the factors that AI is bringing is a lot of fictional streams. It is bringing a different kind of wrinkle to the game. And so I think they're trying to prepare so that they're not paying out a bunch of robots. Uh, I think that's one of the one of the things I've done a lot of reaction videos that have kind of led to it. But these platforms are all figuring out new systems. Some of them they're trying to figure out that are artist centric. Most mm -hmm. of them are really about supporting their company the thing that makes spotify so unique though is that they're one of the only music distributors or not distributors one of the only music platforms that doesn't have a product outside of music when you think about apple music apple mm -hmm. music has apple you think about amazon music amazon amazon right. right so they're what one about of the title title who who ended up buying title i think mean, i don't know mm -hmm. jay sold it off but the point I'm making is that the reason they have such an issue, like I don't know about title, but I know that the reason that they have such an issue is because here they are, I think they have like a 30% market share, right? Which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been on record that 70 cents of every dollar 
go to Warner Music, go to Sony Music, and Universal. Mm. 70 cents of every dollar. You know who else was in that same situation in 2012? Netflix, where 64% of their income was generated, or excuse me, was accounted for from the people they were licensing movies from or TV shows from. Right. Well, they changed that from, I think, 64 to like 20 or 30% when they started coming up with original content. So then you get mm. Ozark, you get House of Cards, you get Stranger Things eventually. You get people who actually left too. I mean, like Marvel left and all that stuff. Yeah, they, were like, like, they were like, screw you. That was like, going to be the end of them. <laughs> supposed to be the end of them. Then they had original yeah. content. Well, Spotify attempted to do that when they couldn't renegotiate these licensing deals right. and they got threatened with all kind of lawsuits and they got scared and they backed away. So this is oligarch that is in their pockets. And so they don't, they, their only pivot to original content is podcast. Yeah, they just paid Rogan like two hundred twenty million. Two hundred and fifty. You know what's crazy? Last million. year, you know what's crazy? Last year they did. Well, they did this pivot after having you know Michelle Obama, Joe Rogan, uh, uh, you know Barack Obama, and all these different folks they had for the podcast. Kim Kardashian, and they still didn't flip a profit. So for you to find out of nowhere two hundred and fifty million dollars that you can secure a Joe Rogan with in my opinion, is a slap in the face to the people that were the foundation of why you even have a platform that can pay out $250 million. When you're, when you're now saying to artists who would have gotten paid, whatever they got paid for, whatever streams they did, that no, you can't get that anymore. You got to reach a threshold. And then to present it in a way where it doesn't have enough details and the artists who are making that threshold are now mm. turning on the artists that can't make the threshold. That's an yeah. evil, evil game. So now you got folk artists who feel like I'm above all this and they're laughing at the ones who can't meet the threshold. And now those same artists are looking up and seeing their songs and albums are disappearing because of 90 percent fictitious, fictitious streams. So they're yeah. not touched. They're not unaffected by all these changes going on. So. It, I saw this a mile. I saw this a, 15 miles away, and uh, I'm a big Prince fan. I'm big, big Prince fan. Yeah, uh, me, and, and me, me as well. And and both of them saw something with the streaming. Nipsey said one time that it was his goal to figure out how to create experiences that you can't stream. Mm -hmm. That stuck with me. Prince removed his music, I believe, in 2015 from the streaming services That's right. entirely. I think he might have even like only brought it back to title for a second. Even Taylor uh, Swift. Taylor Swift. Well, I know she had some other issues going on with, you know, who actually mm -hmm. owned the music and whatnot. Uh, right. But with him, his, 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 his Prince could do that and still generate hella money because he was a beast in business as well. That's right. Independently. With that said, though, I kept having this thought in my mind of everybody that I ask about whether I should remove it doesn't know what it's like to remove it the only person that's going to know that is me when i do it i had someone like bro i, I interviewed larus larus was cracking up he was laughing at the idea i love i love larus you're gonna take your music he was laughing like, we had an interview he laughing at that mm -hmm. uh I, I talked to one of my former managers he's like that just doesn't make any sense you know he, he compared it to being a restaurant that doesn't <laughs> accept credit cards he's like you gotta make it for your fans i'm at the point now where it's like i have the flexibility to say this because i'm not I believe the relationship between an artist and a fan should not be slavery. Yeah. It should not be slavery of your mental health. It should not be like people have a thin line between loyalty and slavery. And I think a lot of times they will sacrifice their own mental well-being and their capacity to even create the art that people fell in love with to satisfy people who will never be satisfied. And so when I thought about it, I was like, I'm tired of trying to make everybody else happy. And yet for the last 19 years, nobody has done anything to adjust for artists in that space. You know, nobody. I'm, I'm taking nobody. Yeah, off. bro. Man. And I never, the thing is, I never not once, you look at through all these videos, I never not once said, you guys should follow me. I said, this is what Curtis King is doing because I see it clear as day. The, the icing on the cake was the whole threshold and then learning about these new rules and I wasn't going to be affected. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. folks that I've been given information to and advice to, mentorship for the last nine years, yeah. they were. That's not the way that, when I say DIY, I say do it yourself. That's not the way that we operate in our tribe. 
We want to look out for it. We want to look out for us as a whole and do things that make sense. And so for me, I was started thinking about like, all right, well, what options are there on the table for me to actually monetize my art? And could this be the reason why you see so many artists putting out half ass versions of even their own ceiling of greatness? Um, yeah. Oh, man. This, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, man, I, I've had many big. conversations with my peers, bro. Like, I have a, I have a rapper, man. You guys got to look this rapper up named uh, Stevie Crooks. He's a phenomenal MC. And we were talking about him. We're like, man, this current ecosystem does not support the idea of us reaching the highest levels of our artistry. Mm. It doesn't support that. It supports us qu going quantity crazy to check off boxes. But when do we ever become great? Maybe that's the reason why music doesn't stick to people as long anymore. Maybe that's the reason why so much is getting dropped, but so little of it is so special that you want to revisit it in a year or six months. Yeah, man, you 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 really truly are an advocate for this shit for real, because for sure, you know, I don't I don't make music like that and shit like this doesn't affect me because I'm not. I'm not necessarily in that space where I'm making records and but just knowing that this shit exists is is mind blowing to me and knowing that there's an advocate like you fighting for people like yourself and like EJ and all these other fucking producers that came on the show mm -hmm. is I'm is EJ incredible. by the way. Huh? <laughs> EJ, Eddie. That's all right. We we called each other. Uh, I, I called you Nick earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he I'm just called sorry. me by calling. Are we on governments now? Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, everybody. Well, I, mean, I, I, I would argue. Yeah. React, like I, I would argue this does affect you though, because the folks that you're fans of, you may be asking questions like, "Damn, right? What's going on with bro? Like, why is his music sounding the way it sounds? Right? You start oh, no, to, I, for sure. And 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 in the future, yeah. who knows if I, you know, it it might affect me in the future. Sure. You know, yeah. I don't know. Sure. Who Yo, knows? I, I just had a conversation this morning, and I cannot mention the artist. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure um, my, one of my good friends is a manager of a huge artist. Um, on, oh, I know where this is going. On the brink, just TikTok out the out the sky, um, just the, all everything that that adds up to what you were just saying about about. And he said, I said, my wife said, oh, yeah, my wife said, how come this artist isn't signed yet? Hmm. And and he hit me with um, Spotify. Like he said that the, um, their presence on Spotify could be a little bit more. That's the excuse. It it it, it dry. When I tell you this artist yeah. is super talented, I'm sure out the roof, super major pop artist. She's going, she's going to. I say she. She's going to be. But it to the fact that that these labels now are that's their go to. There's no artist development anymore. Think, like nobody's re relying on a human to go into a, a a it's crazy a show anymore to say yo I'm signing that person. Think like, about this for a second though, and I and I saw somebody bring this this as a songwriter that brought this up on Instagram. He said, "Could you imagine if the movie started doing this, or if TV shows started doing this, where we would only get the actors that have gone viral on TikTok?" And it's kind of happening on certain platforms like, you know, shout out to Tubi. Some of these movies is kind of like it's the viral stars and these movies are not that good. <laughs> like no disrespect. Yeah. But the movies are not that developed because there's an art form behind this. And it's crazy that I become a polarizing voice saying this. And it's such an obvious statement. Like there are people who are professionals like there's pros and cons of this era. Like what we're talking about right now is the same thing happening in sports media and that the people who went to broadcast and journalism school, they're now being replaced by the athletes. Who oh, are yeah. Sport. Oh, my God. Right. There's so so that, sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. Because when you because I low key as a as a as a as a basketball fan, mm -hmm. I want to know from somebody who's going through an injury, how long Anthony Davis might be out for this. That's right. I've had this like that's there's benefits in that. Even knowing the X and O's. And some folks get on there. Yeah, I, fuck, I fuck with Tony Romo in the booth. I, I don't, you know, so, and I don't want to hear about Skip Bayless. I don't. Skip Bayless has nothing. 
in certain it's situations, I feel like it's okay, but I totally me. understand yeah. what you're saying. So, but I, I, but I think I think we're living in a time. Not to interrupt you, but I think we're living in a time where both of those are happening, and and we kind of have to like something has to give. It's just unfortunate that if you do that in music, you know what happens? You get somebody who does the numbers you're talking about on Spotify. Somebody who's great on TikTok. Their presence is amazing, but they've never done a show in their life. And they haven't gone through any hole in the wall shows to build their character, to build their confidence, to build their stage presence. No, these labels go and put these folks on the rolling loud stage. Yeah, because they went viral. And you want to put them on Coachella (laughs) and you wonder why people don't want to buy tickets to come see it. Well, look what you're putting out there. I wouldn't go see movies if it was nothing but people who went viral on 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 social media, but never got their acting chops up. Because all they know how to play are the people they created in their skits. All right. <laughs> Damn. So now music has become that. But it's like people treat music so cheaply. And, and, and even it's not just the folks who are in business. It's artists who are doing this, too. That's why when mm-hmm. I had that song that I, I, I told you about uh, playing business, playing business is me realizing like, yo, Santa Claus ain't real, bro. I'm looking around a lot of artists. and I'm like, you're talented as shit, but you don't want this. You don't love this. This is mm. this is a way for you to address your daddy issues. Can we play it? You want to find some love through yeah, music. Play. You yeah, want to find people that come in here and validate you because nobody in your life really validated. I can tell because you don't want to take the extra steps. You don't want to stay in the studio a little bit longer. You don't want to iron on the details of what would actually make you great. You're not concerned with being great. You're concerned with spiking off dopamine. You're concerned with... Mm fighting with those inner demons but not necessarily conquering them just hustling with them so when i started seeing that i was like i can't kick it with you i can't make songs with you because when you work with folks like this it's draining to the people who care yeah and i man, just can't that, I, man. I'm not allowed to happen no more and that's in I, any field i would suggest that and and yo i mean it's funny man uh react because I, I don't know if I'm, was it you or somebody else i was like had a conversation like well, somebody asked me like man like how come you're not working with this i'm like because like <laughs> why <laughs> like you know what i'm saying uh, like when you've been in that situation huh? you never want to go back again and when you work with somebody no. that don't love this and they shortcut every part of the process and yeah, they no. whine and they complain and it's like I don't look at this as a hard job. People, are, I have artists who are like, I don't want to create content. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do shows. It's a part of your job description. Why did you choose this job? Yeah. Right. But Man. you want to change all the rules to 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 satisfy your laziness. Nah, bro. I can't. We're not I can't doing rock that. With it. Maybe I'm the old head talking when I say that, but I can't. Rock nah, with not it. at all. <laughs> this, is, this, is, uh, this is Eddie's reaction. Um, when somebody asked him if why he's not working with that artist, that specific, huh? Is, <laughs> hmm? huh? 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 I love huh? it. I love it. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I I, I don't <laughs> do it, man. Is. Yeah, and they're gonna I mean, they're they gonna call you pretentious. They're gonna call you Hollywood. They're gonna call you everything. With oh, not- I've been call, I've I've been called that. I've been yeah. called that even on the, even on the DJ circuit, man. I've been called um like oh man, just because I'm handling my business, like I know my worth. And and if yo, you how do I get this motherfucking it? cat off the screen though? Why is this cat still on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is it? Huh? Why is it still on the screen? Huh? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest uh, man. The, this is the greatest. Whoever created I'm this. I'm sorry, movie. Curtis. That's okay. You're on, you're on. Can we play um, the right? Maybe if we play the playing business record, the cat will go away. All right. Yeah. Play the. Yeah. There we go. Oh yes. There we go. A world, world premiere, 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 premiere. I'm sick and tired of playing business. business. And all of that pretending. I done heard a million ways to make a million. Now I'm really about to get it. And I don't care who get offended, there's a limit on my time and it's ticking Man, I'm tired of playing business And now I know that y'all pretending I done heard a million ways you'll get paid But now I'm really out here getting it I don't care who get offended, I can't let you waste my time, homie, quit it I don't wanna hang around you rappers 
If this music ain't your passion Not cause I'm a peerist, but clearly I feel detachment It's two categories of rappers I thought was cracking So you look inside their eyes and see a little Donnie Brasco The rapper on the TV that be lying by his dreams And the up and coming rapper that be lying by his dreams I thought that he was merely a product of a lot of practice Working on his craft, but he been working on his acting And in the underground you got a man that's a distraction He always want a bill, but he ain't never got a ratchet You always talking money, nigga, you a Franklin Hatch You want a ball, but you never come to practice Sick and tired of playing business And all of that pretending I done heard a million ways to make a million Now I'm really about to get it And I don't care who get offended There's a limit on my time and it's ticking Man, I'm tired of playing business And now I know that y'all pretending I done heard a million ways you'll get paid But now I'm really out here getting it I don't care who get offended I can't let you waste my time, homie, quit it G Malone said there's a record business And a music business And Curtis King, I think it'd help you if you knew the difference In the record business, it's about the Grammys and the vanity The views and the who's who's losing their insanity In the music business, music is the top priority The centerpiece product and the object is authority That floored me, I see that I'm playing the wrong sport So ignore it, the billboard charts and they reports It's distorted, you just another business I'ma leave now before they try to come and lead Curtis down the green mile I got a business of my own and we gon' eat now I got my LLC typing on ink foul I don't wanna rap it No shows if niggas speakers out I'm out here trying to sell audio And now you leaving doubt And every potential fan And now these niggas leaving out I got a stage inside my house Nigga, peace out And this one go to all the promoters Oh my god Oh my god Oh my god Oh my god Oh You singing, Curtis? I think Is that Curtis King singing? A little song A little song A little something, something A little song First and foremost, I'm going to tell you something. I'm changing your contact photo in my phone, and it's going to be t- it's going to be the Tupac photo when he's got his fucking middle fingers <laughs> up. That's your new that's your new contact photo. This bro. A, it's a very very different. This is a very different era for me because I have not been the the controversial figure. But then I started realizing like we're living in a time where standing on your truth is controversial. We're living in a time where sticking to your guns is looked yeah. at as like. No, yeah. we don't really. We, we don't. It's, really not, do it's not really controversial, though, bro. When it's the truth, well, you, well I, I say that only because of the the polarizing reactions that of I've course, been no, of the course, I understand what you're saying. That I've been seeing Curtis King think pieces and and take down videos of my character. Nigga, and it's they like, got your phone tap. I'm like, dog. All I they, said they got was your that phone. they got your phone tap probably. like Mar- like MLK B. I mean, I ain't even going like that far, but like, you know, we ain't doing about making some, you know. But, but hey, I look at it. You'd be surprised about the music business, baby. Them jokers no, I don't do. play. I, I'm I'm well aware, but at the same time, I look at this stuff and I'm like, I think we're living in a time where, like, shout out to Cat Williams and the way he started this year off. We're living in <laughs> the year of truth. Like we're really living in a time where it's like, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's ugly, you got to stand in that. And I think that when you don't, I think when you straddle in the fence, people see you as more dangerous. I think when they know where you stand at, there's no mm-hmm. surprises. I've told you where I stand at. Nothing I've mm-hmm. said is uh, irrational, right? Everything that I've mm-hmm. said has been backed by actual information. You can look up yourself that I've looked up uh, and I have a channel where you, you you see it's funny. You can watch videos where I do my first Spotify video and mm-hmm. I'm like, OK, you know, I, I still got my music on here. Hey, guys, I tried to delete it last week and they wouldn't delete my page. <laughs> the next one is like, hey, did you see this new threshold thing? And you see me progressively getting angry because it's like this is real time reaction. So, yeah, nah, it, that song to me represents you know me really standing into my tribe is uh i call them diyers and it's not just a do it yourself musician right but i think a lot of folks see do do it yourself and think it's somebody who you know is begging for help and they think it's an up and comer no i think that diy yeah. is the new generation of independence and independence mm-hmm. means that you're taking your business serious it means that you do understand that there's different departments of a business and that marketing is a part department of it you understand that music is a foundation that second verse in that song is so important because that was a real conversation i had with uh a legend out here glasses malone and he told me he was oh, like mm-hmm. hell yeah he shots of glasses yeah. he recognized he was like there's a difference between the record business and the music business kurt and he said you've been thinking that you've been operating in the record business he said but that's why you hear like death row records you hear all these different records because in that business 
the the symbols of success are very different. It is the vanity statistics. It is the fake streams. It is, um, you know, the the Grammys. It is all these things that mean something in that world. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the business of selling music, you're in the music business. That's why they don't worry about music selling. They don't care about that. That's not their focus. It's sponsorships and all the things that are surrounding the branding of mm -hmm. somebody in music. So in the music business, I recognize like this is why I care so much used to get like criticized for caring as much now i recognize oh i've been operating by the wrong business ethics and the wrong business system but i don't think i would have seen this as the business it was had i not been on youtube for nine years creating a business out of that now that i come back to music i recognize all the errors of the younger rapping curtis the yeah. younger producing curtis and i'm able to come to this and say how do we create a self-sufficient system where I don't have to rely or kiss anybody's ass to be successful? Mm. What does that look like? That's really independent. That's really DIY. Shout out to uh, uh, Arsonist from the Heat Makers. He made a statement that went super viral about like, how could you be on these streaming websites and say you independent when their pockets is being shook up by the people who are the major labels? Some of them even like, mm. like Columbia that had shares of Spotify. Like, how could you say that you're fully detached if you're not independent in your business? I took that as a challenge. Yeah. And now I'm direct to consumer. And I know what that means because I studied that during my nine years on YouTube of this right. is what direct to consumer looks like. I am Amazon selling my own batteries, even though I may have an energizer and a Duracell. I'm selling you the Amazon basics. That's what it is for my music. I'm in the music business. So I just my job today, create the best music possible that I can mm -hmm. through the best producers that I've worked with. Shout out to the Nobbians, the old goshes and all the folks I have access to. Uh, who in their own right, like Nobbians produced for Travis Scott and Drake yep. and, uh, you know, Nas and oh gosh himself, very accredited, huge on social media. And so fire. those are the folks that are like, those are my, those are my folks that I'm working with and doing this business with. Now what I can do is say, what else can I go independent about? What about media? You guys are the first interview that I've done in this entire run of projects. And I did that mm -hmm. on purpose. And then I wanted to talk to media that was mature media. That wasn't going to ask me questions that you can Google. I didn't want to talk to a platform that was just like, you're not going to understand the energy of where I'm coming from yeah, and ask right. me like the clickbait type questions. Like yeah. I, I, I appreciate the respect y'all have for me and what I'm doing and not like trying to belittle it or, or run up, you know? So no, of course, man, we appreciate you too. I, man. I, I couldn't, man. I couldn't wait. Because yeah. cause I knew after looking the last four days, I've been looking at the content. And I was like, <laughs> man, I was like, I'm, I'm, we're going to school. Yeah. Well, like, think, and pretty much. I don't say think about this. I, I want to end this last point in that. Mm -hmm. um, so music. This yep. is the room that I record and I produce my music out of because I still produce my own music. I engineer it, mix it, master it, get it out there, right? Yep. Um, export it. Uploaded in this room, cool. Now I can get my CDs from a website like Kanaki, uh, my my vinyls, get that produced up. My merch is print on demand, cool. So that has, that hasn't has even touched the house. I can go downstairs now, and I've set up an extra living room to basically be my live performance. So now mm, media is optional because I have a YouTube with a quarter million. Uh, subscribers on it so I can plug my own music as my own mid rolls in my videos mm -hmm. um, so and those do great that's so gangster that's so, right? that's so right. fucking gangster <laughs> so, I don't have to go. so there's some of these media outlets that if you don't kiss their ass on a regular basis they're like well, let me see if I can fit you into my busy schedule no no that's cool I'll just plug my music into my own platform yeah. and treat me like I'm just another artist that I support what so, happens if they come knocking on your door, B? Because it, oh, it, it, the way you, the way you're, you know. the way you're moving right now, it, it is going to happen. That's what happens. Yeah, they want you to do it yourself for some for for a, a while, and they know. And then, the, then the music, it, the music is upper echelon, right? And that's no no cap. I appreciate. Um, so, so they may be knocking on that. For, for, I, what I did want to ask you before we go any further, yeah. what pushed you into this? Because you know so much. You know so much. Was there a point in time where you said, fuck it. Like, I'm tired of yeah. this shit. 
I think it was a point in time where I thought it's I, I thought that I was legitimately blackballed. Uh, there was opportunities where the writing was very clear on the wall mm -hmm. that it's not your talent anymore, Curtis. It's 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 really the fact that this person got pissed off and now holds your your future in their palm mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Because if you want to get on these blogs at the time, if you want to get into these type of shows, well, you got to go play the game. And it was always a part of me that's like, no, because those are not the folks that I look up to. Yeah. The folks that I look up to, you talked about like, you know, a, a, a Pac or you t these are folks that Pac was a lot younger. He died at 25 and I feel like he would have transformed into other, other, other aspects. But I think mm -hmm. of a nip who yeah. as much as he is celebrated now, I remember a time period where he was ridiculed for that hundred dollar album. People thought he was like, they were calling him out names. I remember, I remember the that. magazine said he was one of the laziest artists uh, that was untapped potential and he took a lot of offense to that. I remember all that stuff. So when you say they come knocking, I think about that. There's a reason why you go to my stage, mm -hmm. Prince is on the wall with Slave on his face. I and saw. He's on the wall. Yeah. My attitude is always going to be if it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. And if there's anything in what's going on that makes me say hell no, which there likely is, mm -hmm. it's a hell no because one, you coming to my door is only reminding me how serious the work that I am doing is. Yeah. It's a reminder that, hey, y'all don't go looking for people who need you. Mm -hmm. You go looking for people who don't really need you, but they don't know they don't need you. Yeah. Are you are, do you ever turn it off? Turn because what off? It, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was talking to my wife today. I was talking to Jet GPT about this. I was like, <laughs> my friends keep saying I don't have an off switch. My friends keep saying I've been going hard, but I feel like, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it, man, because it, there's so much. I, I, go. Like my mind, my mind, my mind is blown, and I am so, I am so. I'm I'm the I'm I'm the more uh uh. How could you say it? Uh, I'm just in my feelings. When I, when I come to mm -hmm. an artist, when I sit and listen to your story, I am just like over, like completely overwhelmed and and just in awe. And then I just look about like, damn, like he is really doing a lot. Like, yeah. do you ever turn it <laughs> off? My body will turn it off for me. That's 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 the answer. My body knows how to turn it off for me. It it'll 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 get me sick longer than usual okay. and remind me that you're human. Sit your ass down somewhere. Okay. Um but it doesn't help when I listen to folks like David Goggins. It don't help <laughs> not, I got I got my I got his, I got his books. Wall. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm surrounded Hold by. Hold on, I'm about to, I'm about, like, to, I'm about to show a flex right now. Please do. I, I feel like I'm surrounded by people that make me feel like I'm not so special for doing it this way, and this is my job. Like I don't feel like I, right. I, I don't go doing this looking for anybody to celebrate me or, or applaud for me. I look at this like, dog, this is my job. So you could tell this is probably another reason why. But you got a signed copy. Yo, by the man. Can't yeah. hurt me. Man, come on, man. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Shouts to my shouts to my brother, my brother in law. Yeah. G. Edelstein. It's one of those it, it 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 helps you to see the 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 true limitations of what we can do as human beings. Like I don't think that anybody should I'm not saying I don't think anybody should go for a four mile run <laughs> on a broken leg. I'm not saying that, but what Crazy. I'm saying is like I look at this and I'm saying, dog, we got one life and we're living in 2024 yeah. and there are people 20 years before this that could only dream about having the things we have. Yes, it's overwhelming. I tell my peers, I understand this shit is overwhelming. I get overwhelmed doing all the things I do, but we get to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And this is the easiest. When you really think about it, today is the easiest it will ever be because in 10 years, as crypto develops, as the demands of what an artist is supposed to do develops, it's going to get even more complex from now. So enjoy this time right now. Yeah. Instead of focusing on what you're overwhelmed by, take it steps at a time and recognize like this is the easiest. You're talking about algorithms and trying to get in front of people. Dog, just do your work today. So there's times where. I think it's a beauty. I think it's a beautiful benefit of not living too close to L.A. 
and that when you're in LA, you're always surrounded by people that make you feel like you're not doing shit because that's, that's even if they're not doing shit, they're supposed to, they're supposed to do, they're supposed to talk like that. I yeah. live out here and it is so peaceful and the people around me don't care about nothing that I do. They don't bother me. They don't, my music, be, they don't care about none of that. And that peace of mind, knowing that I can look down the hallway and my son is right there after I've worked on music, no mm -hmm. more late night sessions. There's so many things that I don't have to do that if I listen to my peers, I would be crazy to think is possible. But when I saw some of it was possible and I kept pushing it, so media is taken care of my recording is taken care of my merch is taken care of my um my shows because dog that gets su supremely political if you don't you don't kiss the right ass there too and even like the way shows are designed at 39 there's things that at 29 i was like oh i'm just paying dues at 39 i'm like i could have kept my black ass home for this <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds yeah. better at home Yes, because you know what I'm saying. Like we got it's straight into the computer, straight up. So these these ideas, I think, came from a place of frustration with the situation and feel like I had no control. That idea that somebody can be blackballed pisses me off so much because nobody should have that much power, and I I wouldn't want that power to blackball anybody. My thing is this: we're living in a time where that's not possible anymore. You can cancel you whatever, but there's yeah. you make the final decision upon what you want that to be. I, I sat up here and I'm not a supporter of his, but I watched a guy like Trump say the craziest shit over four years. And when they challenged him on it, he doubled down and got more powerful. So I'm when I see that that exists in the same time as cancel culture, cancel culture is Santa Claus to me. Yeah. So I'm just going to speak my piece. I'm going to talk to my tribe. And the people who come into this equation and want to help, I'm not mm -hmm. going to let you slow me down, first of all. And second of all, I can read it a mile away. Like, you either get this shit and understand that I am the value, and not even from a place of ego, but I am the value in this situation because yeah. I know my ultimate source is God, first of all. But I know the value of this, and I, it's been tested and tried for so long just mm -hmm. to get here and i'm still not a household name that's cool but i am paying my day-to-day -day bills my rent my music is all what's determining that i'm taking care of my son and my my wife she has her own business and so it's like i'm i, I thought about this before i had a conversation with you guys yep there was a conversation i had in high school with a, with a, uh, a young dude he was my age. We were, we were, you were both young, whatever. He said, man, what, what, what do you define success as for yourself when you get older? Is it the Grammys? Is it like the mansion? He, and he pointed out past the high school. And he was like, you see that house up there on the hills? He said, man, if I had that and didn't nobody know what I did, I'd be straight. Yep. And something about that stuck with me to where it's like we have our idea of what success is when we're young and wet behind the ears. But then to actually live in it and recognize like. Mm -hmm. It's not as loud as what you thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's not as gold as what you thought it was going to be. But damn it, if it's not satisfying. So as I'm doing these things, like doing the show from the house and broadcast, I'm like, I really feel like I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm first of all, lucky. Mm -hmm. Even with all the hard work, I feel lucky and blessed to be able to do it. But also like. I'm not going to let nobody or no amount of money come in here and disrupt this. I don't care how tight shit gets because I recognize like. I recognize the moment that I'm in right now mm -hmm. and it has to happen because if not, you let these folks determine it, your music ain't going to be worth shit in, in, in a few. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> oh, like just my brain is like, it can't happen, bro. Like it's some of us actually care, man. We yeah. care about the quality. We care about the presentation. Y'all care about the presentation and the quality of this. Like we why do. in the hell would I ever have step? The thing that is the centerpiece. Why would I do shows where it's why would I do shows where the sound is trash and I'm trying to sell people audio? <laughs> it's true. That's High true. quality audio, I'm trying to sell them and and convince them, hey, I know I'm a florist and you walk into my flower shop and every flower is dead in here, but I guarantee you, <laughs> if you pay for it, right. it's in the back is the best of no. So like everything now I'm recognizing like when you finally get some momentum, all that work y'all doing on social media, I'm doing the same kind of work. Protect mm -hmm. your brand at all costs and stop sacrificing it to the lowest bidder because now you got to go right back and do that same groundwork to convince the people that came to see you that yeah, you're I mean, on your stuff. 
Me and Reactive have uh, uh, we just had a conversation about this a couple of days ago, and we, oh, we were yep. like, yeah, f- yeah, fuck that. React was like, nah, we, nope, no, no, me. we're we're good. You're talking to the wrong and fucking what, guy. What yeah. specifically about what? It's just about um, you know, you know, talking in terms of um, of, of joining somebody else to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to 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 do the show and stuff like that, you know, um, and he was like, uh. No, <laughs> like, this is it, our it, shit. Then it becomes a glorified job yeah. that you didn't want to create. When you created this, you created an opportunity for you to tell your story, run your plays. Right. And then you're at the mercy that. of of somebody else who's, who's and they uh, paid you and they paid you. So now they paid yeah, you. Now right. they get to determine now things. You're in handcuffs. Of, and was crazy. And I heard currency say this. He was like, he thinks that there's. He thinks that there's less creative. There's less people who want to choose to use their creativity than there are people who choose to use it. And because of that, you have more people who are in a position to, that have money that want to pay folks like you and I mm-hmm. to do the things that they see as tedious and unnecessary work because they know that that's a means to get them more money. What I yeah. recognize is that they're not they're not aware that there's artists like myself that have the ability to create music at a high level, but also who have critical thinking skills to understand what is good and what is not good for me. And I think that this is when I get in conversation with some folks, man, they, they, they talk to me so condescending because they're like, you're just a rapper. You're just a producer. And I'm like, I don't think you understand what that means because you've never made music. But mm-hmm. me going to being a rapper after being a producer, it just made me realize how many damn steps go into production. I was sitting here in front of a verse and two verses and two choruses like, damn, this, this is it. No going through <laughs> right. stairs for the next 40 minutes. You know what I'm saying? No, mm-hmm. no tweaking and subtractive EQing and, and, and trying to figure out the proper, you know, a compression for this drum bus. Like they don't understand that our genius. And I think that's partly because it's our responsibility to um, launch these things on our own. So that mm-hmm. we can show others what's possible. And when they come to the table to do business with us, if it's not mutual respect and obvious respect and they don't want to partner, yeah. they can leave. They don't, you don't have to be here. We'll figure it out because we're creatives. Man. See? Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Why am I going to tell you yes when I don't have to? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yep. And then you're going to come knocking and tell me that what I'm doing is so great that you want to break bread with it? Oh, you messed up. Yeah. You gave me a number that I know is double that because you want to make your profit? Nah. It's a hell no to the first seven deals that come through. Yep. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that bag better that bag better be super duper duper right. I'm telling you. The, and, the, and the contract have, would be right too. Forget, like the bag is cool, but make no, sure. I, that's that what I meant too. The contract, control excuse control me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You're not taking none of my control away from this because these folks don't know how to make it work. All they did was figure out how to make money work. That's right. Yep. Um, they come in here and try to tell you. That's a great quote. Cook. What? They try to come in here and tell us how to do. They try to tell us how to cook. All you did was buy the franchise. You don't know nothing about cooking. Yeah. You figure out how to franchise it. Cool, but you don't know nothing about this cooking. That's what. And brought and and, and, I'll th- and I'll throw, just like you said that, or I said that back at you. Yeah. To the point where you're like, ah, oh, and then you give up the. You just forget about it and then you lose control and then Fam, you know family you know how many folks i meet in this that you know I, I, they remain nameless how many folks i meet in this that find supreme levels of success that are waiting for somebody to come save them <laughs> they're waiting like they don't want i know a couple they don't, <laughs> that's what i'm saying like yeah, it's folks, yeah. they don't really want to be independent and i don't blame them i don't sh- i don't shame them i just want them to stay the hell away from me Cause it's a distraction to what I'm doing. I am building this just like any other person in, 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 in this, in this country that wants to build their own business from scratch and pass it along their family line. Yeah. I want to do the same thing. I'm not looking for the highest bidder to come relieve me of all this work. No, no, no. I'm trying to build up something that has a legitimate system, a reliable system that I can now delegate responsibilities to and scale. React. Did you, man, re- Man, we gonna talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I mean, you know, we 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 sort of touch base. We we touch base on this. I, you know, I give pep talks. He knows I get pep talks, 
No. Yeah, we talk, we, I mean, this is, a, this is a daily conversation between the two of us. Mm. It is, man. Yeah. Um, but damn, man, like this is this is what I'm talking about too. This is a beautiful thing about, um, and, and it's a, it's a running theory. I mean, a running um, theme on the show about like I've mentioned a couple times about being staying a student. You know, um, sure. I'm, I'm your senior by 13, 14 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am I, I just love being a student. I Sorry. just, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I love to, like, like I said, we're all masters at at, at our craft, but, but still, that you can always learn something. This is the, this is the message to, to the, to the older guys who are my age. D- do not think that that you don't have it all. I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at React. You know, who's younger than me? Who, who just is a genius when and picks up things. When it comes to editing and mm-hmm. software, and then and then you, I got you know the Curtis King right here, who who is just a YouTube a, a straight up influencer and a, and a motivator, period. Right. And then on top of that, there's the music, which is you know super fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm and I'm learning. You've gave you've given me so many gems right now, where I, I'm I'm literally going to go to I'm going to bed tonight like, yo, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. I might not even yeah. sleep. <laughs> Double down. Double down. They're not they're not they're not they're not prepared for that. They they're prepared for what's your price? Let's get this over with. And when they talk to someone like like us, when they talk to us and we say no, it's it's no different than when we were younger, we were in high school, and there's a fine girl that walks into a building and everybody's like, all the dudes is like, oh my gosh, she's bad. Da, da, da. And you don't give her no attention. All mm-hmm. of a sudden she finds her way to being in front of you. It's like, well, what makes you so different that you're not trying to get my number and all of that? Um, I think it's the same thing with, with, with business, especially in music, in that mm-hmm. they're used to people, Cat Williams said a lot of it, they're used to people giving up any and everything, hey, yo, mm-hmm. in order to get to that next level. What they're not used to is someone standing on what they say they are and working towards it on a daily basis. Like the last three days, I had to take a break because releasing two albums in in, in less than a month that I gave full on campaigns to, plus still being a dad and a husband and taking care of my responsibilities still as a YouTuber, like it was a lot. And then doing this show was a, a lot. But thankfully, now I'm starting to get help. Thankfully, now I'm starting to recognize those times where I'm like, I recognize this voice. This voice is not telling me to stop. This voice is telling me to 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 recharge and come back and be refreshed. So I'm in that place right now where it's like I take those days off yeah. because I can. But tomorrow I got content. I got to go out there and we're going to get that done. But mm-hmm. uh, I never lose sight of the fact that I don't have to do this. I get to do this. And uh, that makes the difference in this, man. But everybody don't love this shit. And when I figured that out, I started figuring out everybody is not entitled to your time or uh, or your energy. So I'm I'm protecting that at all costs at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's smart, man. You have to. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that because and and I think also other people have um they have their agenda as well. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so. You should have saw the first time we threw one of these shows. Yeah. It wasn't at my location. It was at a different location. And it was a dude I had never met him before at this location we shooting at. And he was like, he was like, he looking, looking around like, man, this is, this is crazy, man. Like, y'all should do this every week. And I'm like, no. No. I didn't say that. I was like, yeah, man, I, yeah, I get it. But I see the fangs coming out. I see people who are like already asking me, man, how do I do this myself? Yeah. And so in me recognizing that this is a business. Mm-hmm. There's an opportunity here for me now to teach my fellow DIYers how to do this themselves as well. So um, I'm currently working on a few different courses because I came from the YouTube space and I understand what that requires. Right. Yeah. So uh, it, it's very, very smart. That's it's amazing that, to do that. Gen- though, now. You know, I, it's amazing that I'm that we're able to do that in the space where it's like. It used to be a time where you started teaching and people thought you were like over the hill, like, oh, that must mean like the money's low and you can't do it. And it's like, no. This is our responsibility to help right. one another. This is our mm-hmm. responsibility. The more you know, the more you owe. My grandmother used to say, the more Ooh. you know, the more you owe. 
So I'm in a place now where it's like I know all these things not to just keep them to myself. I need to share these things because if you get more independent artists, or excuse me, more up and comers who mm -hmm. see the appeal of being independent, they'll be more independent and you'll see less people crashing out, getting these deals and burning themselves out by the time they're 24, 25. I look at some of these 24, 25s, they look 60, 70 in the face. <laughs> yeah, man. Shit is stressful. Social man. media alone. But then add on top of that a deal, a debt that you can't pay off for the rest of your life. Mm. It's a lot. So I, 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 I feel like it's my responsibility to to uh, bring bring light to truth. But truth tellers always have a difficult time. I get mm. that. It's always going to be a bumpy road. And uh, I, it's not my I didn't come here to 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 no. expose it all. I came here. No, to no. Just, I mean, just make my music and tell my truth. No, this is perfect because I mean, but I, I did want to ask, like, you know, like, you know, um, you know, you're a YouTuber so to speak um and then and then you get a guy who um the that i that i've known in my past um a guy like uh, lee or cohen mm -hmm. um like if uh, his past and and what he and what he's doing at youtube now um mm -hmm. are you in contact with any of his people or stuff like that because you're huge like nah. is there a threshold when it comes to youtube and then it there's is. like okay it is okay. i mean there, there's a threshold of i think they switched it now to a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch time they just updated it recently so there's a okay. threshold system i think actually the same folks that were that designed the threshold for uh what company was that? Um, some of the streaming platforms is the same guy that they hired. It wasn't Lear Cohen. It was someone else that they hired mm -hmm. to establish it for YouTube. I think what people and people have made this connection before, like, why are you on YouTube if you don't like the streaming platform or the streaming setup? Right. YouTube was not my passion. Music was always my passion. Music was mm -hmm. a thing that I did as a means to express myself, that I put my all into the product from the packaging down to the theme, down to the title of the songs, to the production, mixing all this work we do. Yeah, I should not be the one crazy saying it's worth more than zero, zero point three. I don't want to figure out a new algorithm. Heck, I don't want to figure out a new way to pimp this. I don't want to fake stream because you can't win at that game. Russ, just expose that. You can't win that game when these folks are doing this and Spotify is saying, hey, we'll let you get we'll let you get away with 89 percent fictional streams. But after that, mm -mm -mm, yeah. that's, when you're playing in that game, you you, you it's rigged. It's rigged. It's entrapment. You know? It's entrapment and you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're being told to meet a sales quota. So yeah. it's up to you ultimately to say, do I want to play this game or yeah. do I really just want to make money off of my music? And that's not a crazy concept. Other art forms see this every day. So for us, I don't care what people tell me where society is at, how much it ages me. No, if I have like, let me know what the real number is. If I have 220 people. Yeah. Forget it. If I got 143, which is what I had that went and purchased uh, St uh, Storm Symphony, they accounted for four thousand mm. dollars. I know that may not be a lot of money in no, terms of the industry. No, we, like, we get damn, it. We, that I, money can do things when you're independent. I can make I can it. some furniture and I can pay some people who my collaborators. So now they're getting paid what would have took three months for them to even sniff a fraction of. Mm -hmm. on the regular platform right. so now i'm looking at this and i'm like all right this next album it did about a thousand a day so it's like this becomes my business model all i gotta do is make the best music possible and people who know that i appreciate their business and i and i and i and i and i and i, and I, I, I absolutely stay in contact with them and let them know what's going on mm -hmm. they will come to support I had never had anybody pay for an album from me for more than 50 bucks in my 20 year career. But in the 20th year, eight people bought my last album, Storm Symphony, for a hundred dollars. Eight people bought my album for a hundred dollars plus. Wow. So mm. I look at that and I'm like, every time somebody tells me what's not possible, we go and do it. And then the more I start recognizing it's possible, the more quieter I want to get then. Not even, I don't want to, I don't even want to talk shit no more. I just want to be like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. You, you, you know what? You got it under control because what 
artists, I think, need to understand, especially in hip hop, for my peers that I've mentored, that I've talked to, you don't have to figure out what's going to work for everybody to figure out what's going to work for you. Mm. It's not your responsibility to figure it out for the entire. What do all independent artists need to do, Curtis King? Figure out what they need to do first. Because your success model, your success formula is very different from mine's. Mm. Mine's just happen to look the way that it does, and it's working. Now that it's working, I don't got to tell nobody about nothing. I, I, the ask, I'll share. But I'm now figuring out my business because this is my business to figure out. Yeah. So uh, folks got all of these. Everybody who got all of these ideas about what's possible and what's not possible, 90% of them don't make music. So what does that tell yeah. you? First of all, I mean, anything is possible. <laughs> <you know? laughs> a cat can sing in reverb. That's possible. Oh, I yeah. Wow. Uh, of, of course, bro. I mean, internet, internet baby. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Huh? It's a great teacher tool. I'm a lot of huh? It's a great teacher tool. <laughs> huh? Not the, not the, well, I like the, 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 the picture one is good. Huh? And this one's good, too. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Internet undefeated. undefeated. Yes. Speaking of um speaking of internet, uh, you know, we're talking about independence and being independent and mm -hmm. being an independent artist. Um have you heard of a platform called Even? Yes, yes. That's the one that I actually launched Storm Symphony with. So they're doing a thing that they're they're not necessarily a DSP. They don't categorize themselves as a DSP, but they are basically um I look at them almost like the same way you look at crowd and community funding for Patreon, how it like it gathers the people that mm -hmm. want to support you. It's an organized uh, uh, sort of experience for your listeners. So with even they have this platform, I believe uh, Russell's actually an investor in, in even. Uh, but with even you upload your project, they approve it. And then you start to discuss rewards that you want to offer your fans based upon what tier that they decide to invest into. Mm -hmm. um, this model wasn't actually new to me. I, I just did it in such a barbaric way before. <laughs> like I've had two albums, one called Jetpack on E, another one called, oh, not Jetpack on E, one called uh, Jubilee Year and the other one called Somersault that both went number three on the iTunes charts. I did mm -hmm. it again in 2022 and it reached number one DIY two was an album to yes. reach from this reward system. So they were to me a structured website that created this for you. Cause I had to deliver these rewards. Like you send me a screenshot to my email of the pre-order and then I'm going to send you your two courses or your production or your beats, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I ran that as a reward system, but this was more of an organized approach to it. I heard about them and uh, I was interested in doing work with them and seeing what that would look like. And uh, we had a successful launch. It was dope. Um, but then that other voice started kicking in for me. Like a lot of artists right now that are really doing their thing with them. And a shout out to them because it's, it's the structure that most artists need. I don't right, think it's right. the structure that Curtis King needs. And right. it's not from a place of arrogance because they were, you know, they were dope. They, were, they, they really worked with my ideas. I had a lot of rewards. Um more than the average so sometimes it create a little bit of complication but now i'm at a place where it's like if i'm going to go independent that means at all cost right i don't really need someone to kind of be the middleman between me and my audience mm -hmm. i know how to develop a website i know how to you know put my music on Bandcamp for a, a seamless streaming experience mm -hmm. um i know how to work these things i know how to code so it's like, mm -hmm. for me, I needed a little bit more in-depth control of what's going on. Right. And I'm just a control freak. So even as great <laughs> that if, if you're at a place where you're like, you want to go, you want to, if you want to test direct to consumer, but you don't want to have to have the responsibility and the weight of developing your own website to do that right yet, right now, yeah. I think it's an excellent because they create a landing page for you and all that. Uh, uh, for me, yeah, I, I had to. Of course, I had to develop my website. <laughs> right, right, right. So we're direct, direct. Got Every you. CD that's out there got my fingerprints on it. <laughs> so, so, Kurt, with that being said, it, will there be a day that you say, I'm entertaining the thought of 
finding somebody to do it to 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 help you out so for that to once even, you get to a certain point for that to even be a conversation that I entertain i don't want to be in a place where i need the help I, I, if anything i want to be in well, a position uh, assistance or well, well i yeah. guess assistance and help well, are the same a, thing a partnership but, yeah. If we're talking about a, a, a yes. real partnership, a real a real deal, you respect me, I respect you, and we have ethics that are aligned mm -hmm. business wise, because that's so important to me. I know people say like you, you know, there's no emotions in business. It's like well, there's emotions in the business of humans. That's that's all. That's what we do. Right? <laughs> all right. But there's no emotions. It's just business. It's just business. That's that's bullshit, you know, right? Somebody who plays that game was an asshole outside yes. of business. They're not just a good guy because they decided to be. And a you're not guy. Steve Jobs, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Stop yeah. It. Stop. Stop. It. So <laughs> you, if you're gonna do some assholeish in business, you're that person all the time, and I yes. don't align with that. Like, I get you want to have the better in. I get that. That's cool. And if I'm being altruist, if I'm being like like delusional, that's fine. That's why I choose to do it myself because I don't want to be in a business of screwing people over and feeling like that's just the way that we got to go get it because I know way too many successful businessmen and women who are not in music who have not had to go that route to support their family, their livelihood and create generational income. Mm -hmm. But I think that's thrown upon us. So if there's if there's a situation where I have scaled this, I don't think that it makes sense if I'm able to scale it. Right. Now, if I find some restrictions because there's like mind you you know who planted the seed and, he, and they have no idea who's that um the homie Murs invited me out to strange land to do a music video with him we have a song called lemon juice and i went to their strange land location right mm -hmm. tech nine i went to the location and i got a great tour and the tour guy told me this is one acre this is another acre another acre another acre I go through all of these buildings and I'm like, what did this place used to be before? And they said it used to be a Montgomery Ward warehousing facility. <laughs> and when you see, hey, do you guys have Tech Nine's merch from 2016 from this tour? They look down on the, you know, on the paperwork. Oh, it's over here. Pull down a box and everything is there. When I saw they had that organization of one building is their merchandise. One mm -hmm. building is their uh, physical albums. One building is their car wash, the strange music car wash. <laughs> Even the golf carts are strange music golf carts. I go to another building. Yeah. They got frustrated with working with the construction companies, so they invested in their own construction uh, 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 vehicles. There's yeah. forklifts and all that stuff, and they're ready to do construction if these construction companies start acting up. When I saw that, it planted a seed. You can be self-sufficient, mm -hmm. and I don't know what that looks like for everybody who desires that. I know what it looks like for me now. Yeah. I, like All I needed was a house with more rooms than we need to live in, and we're going <laughs> to figure out how to make every one of the rooms <laughs> make some money. Yeah, right, my wife, oh, another man. one. She 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 does her nails. She has her her, her press on nail business that she's expanding upon. Like it it is it's difficult. It's a challenge. It is not easy work. But damn it, when I saw that it was possible in those multiple warehouses, and they had people who were like, "This is one of the most sought after jobs living out here." I'm already a strange music fan. When I saw it was possible in those warehouses, I said, "I think I know what I need to do." Even if I didn't know at that time. Mm -hmm. Um. So now I feel like I'm not creating my own strange land, but it's like. I'm inspired by that because I got exposed yeah. to that early and they're not relying upon like, I just can't imagine a strange music saying, would you ever entertain an Interscope deal? It's like, no, dog, no. We, we got pork lips. What are you talking about? Like we got, yeah. we're, we're good. We're, we're good over here. If we I'm got... doing my business, if I'm doing my job and this is the business that I actually want to be in, I will yeah. have aligned with the right people that can scale this properly. And if I scale it properly, why are we partnering? True. Well, so I was just like, saying in terms yeah. of like um, you you wearing a lot of um, caps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It can be, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you are human. But you know what, though? This is what I'm getting at. That's our job. Right. If you had any business, right. if you had like a like a like a mom and pop Chinese food restaurant, like it's mm -hmm. your business to find the proper management. If I had real estate, mm 
Yeah. It's my pro- it's my job to find a real estate manager for this particular property. And so that comes along with the with the the job description of me saying I want to have a music business. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yeah, there's no way in hell that Curtis King, the deeper I get in my 40s and 50s, I do nearly the amount of work that I'm doing now. But if I understand how to build a business properly and I'm aligning with the right people, these other companies won't really make a lot of sense because they're going to morph it into something else. At that point, I might as well just sell it. Working smarter. Yeah. If I'm doing my job, I don't think there's a reason that conversation needs to come up. If I'm if I'm not, if I'm struggling because I'm I'm, I've been taking too many risks. You know, I'm in a different headspace, but the place I'm in now, I would be surprised. If I looked and I fast forward a video t- some years from now and I'm sitting up here like, yeah, man, I just I signed the deal. <laughs> All that for what, Curtis? You yeah. created this, this, you know what I'm saying? You created this environment just to to give it away. To sign the deal? Yeah. To give it, no, to literally give it away. Right. Literally give it away. And if it's just for the sake of money, I'm sorry for me. That comes from a place of scarcity. I know we got bills that got to get paid. But what you, but I'll be telling, I'll be telling, what you think I'm out here trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> like we're building a business and I know I have nobody to blame but myself if certain ends don't meet because I do reinvest a whole lot of my money, all my money back into what I do. Sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes it don't. I've had plugins that I've done. Curtis King plugins that I had one called Tape Boy that went crazy. And then I had a few duds after that, but I've gone through it to know what it feels like. I know what it means to launch a successful campaign. I know what it means to do too much. So now when I build the systems out, whoever I hire already knows you're never going to be angry at me. You're angry at the system, but the system works. Man. So I'm in that space now where it's like, let me structure this. Let me just get it. Like, you know, how folks be trying to like, bro, you know how many people come to me and tell me like, man, what you need to do is. Leave me alone. Like, let me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Could you imagine like, like you have a vision in your head and you're painting it on a canvas and you're like, Ooh, okay. I can see this. And somebody's like, that don't look like a house. <laughs> I mean, right. A house, right? Like, can I cook? So that's how I feel like right now where it's like, I've allowed because I'm so open to different perspectives. I've allowed so many people to get in my head and tell me what I should do. And all of them have led me to crashing. <laughs> one person I haven't trusted is me. Hey. So, 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 so uh, with that being said, too, because um, we're going to wrap up in a little bit. Sure. Like, you said it's going to be a long session, and here we are. No, <laughs> no, no, but this is, this is great. I mean, we, man, I mean, I, this by far might be the most educational one. This, wow. for real. <clears throat> this um, is the one, bro. This is. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say it right now on camera. <laughs> Honored to be on here. I appreciate this, you having me. This is the one. This is this is the one. Like my my mind is blind, and we've had so many um, artists on here and producers that have dropped gems, man. But th- this one right here, man, my like my like like the game is tilted. It's mm-hmm. it, you know my my brain is like. <laughs> 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 uh, I might not get no sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, you, you, now you know my issue. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh man, they won't so, let me rest. I know. So, with all that being said, as well, like because, like I said, you, you, you are um, your internet personality. You are um, a motivator, influencer. Um, getting back to the music, I know we don't want to talk about the music, but do you have the bug again? Is the bug there? Oh no, we we I'm f- my cooking bug. 2024 I've been saying my part-time job is content creation. Okay. And my full-time job is being an artist in okay, this, there this we go. Why I had to release this project this this full album cuz Storm Symphony yeah. is like instrumental album plus a few songs. Yeah. This is my full 10 track album. Mm. Um I'm rapping on everything. I'm 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 obviously pr- uh, producing on some of it like no, I am fully back as an artist. And that is me at my, that's me at my best. That's me and my piece. So right. this are we get, is, are we getting you back on the road to perform? Like, are no. you going to, are you going back out or are you going to stay in? Not a chance like, just, okay. I've been because on what you did last weekend was, was pretty, that was all I had to see. We, you know what I'm saying? I even be open about it. Like 
we're just building something new, but the fact that I sold $405 worth of tickets to a show that was in my living room. <laughs> no, no advertisements, <laughs> right? So that's no crazy. advertisements, no, no. Oh mate. my like, god! So, yes. so, so, so like, so the homie Triz is a, is a legitimate artist is out here as well. Like, but I didn't even advertise. He didn't even promote it. I told him, I said, bro, we're just gonna do this organically. And when you pop up, you pop up. So it's like, I know my number now. My number doesn't have to be a million, or I'm embarrassed. There's too many artists out here who are afraid of their number being 55 people. And so what? You only get 15 of them in your live stream. You got them. And they're paying. So for me, I'm like, yo, $405 worth of tickets? We straight. For a liver? For, for the first show? Oh, it's in the, At your crib. At my crib. I, I got to, you know what I got to do after this show? I didn't have to wait till two o'clock, three in the morning to get in my car and hope that I don't get pulled <laughs> right. over. I didn't have to like get home and then. You just left the room and went into your living room and watched I TV. I didn't go to Jack in the Box because I'm not the only thing. your son, right. I saw my son, high fived him, kissed my wife, and said, "Man, thank you so much." She bought pizza for us and all of that, and I went ah. upstairs and went to sleep, yeah. and then woke up the next day and chopped up content while I sipped coffee. Like, it's amazing. That's the life for me, it's like, amazing, I, I think dude. people like they th they think that every rapper desires to have like uh, the superstar. I mean, da, 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 and it's like, I want peace. I want yeah. peace. I want prosperity. I want to absolutely bank out and kill it at this but i don't have to worry about that as being the number one priority because first of all i believe in god and second mm -hmm. of all i know that i am doing what i'm supposed to be doing i'm not led like i keep getting people so i said on twitter i said for the next six months i'm not doing any shows outside this house i'm going to build this up and make this the thing and then out of out of nowhere I get an inquiry from a show in North Carolina. Oh man, we want to book you for da 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 da. I get something the other day about the the, the L.A. County Fair. We want to book you for this, and I'm like, all right, God, I know what part of the story this is. I'm sticking yeah. to it. I don't. I'm not. I'm not going away from that. So to me, that's the ultimate test. Is that no? We're going to build this up to the point where now show promoters who used to have a monopoly on things and get to determine whether or not you could perform or not, they can't do that with me. That's right. If I exist. There's a hundred other other folks that can do the same exact thing, and I'm going to teach them the way. So I have up, like at this point, it's just like, wh what are we touring for? If we're not going to go there to generate income, and what? Yeah. And would it be something to where it's like, would I be going out there just for the look? Yeah. Or, or, or would I be making less money on the road? Because now I can't make YouTube content the way that I'm doing. I can't do reaction videos. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to see my son on a regular basis. Uh, like I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get my it. wife is going to have to hold down the household. You know what I'm saying? For like anything that happens. So it's like at no, 39, this makes sense. And then you start realizing maybe this is the reason you got artists that get in their 40s and start having all of these health issues. There's nothing out there on that tour that supports healthy living. Mm, talk about it, man, because that's that's this is how I this is how I um actually um I, w I was put on to um to Curtis King. I actually was going through Instagram and then I saw a uh, gem and you were talking about that about um, forty year old rappers, yeah. forty year old rappers, and depleted. And, and, they yeah. steal all the life out of them. These tours is not like I went on a tour recently mm -hmm. and I realized like at this age, I can't eat the way that I used to eat. I can't run that same play like I used to run because nah. now I'm like, dog, my body is nah. not Taco Bell. Don't don't it don't it don't operate the same way in this. this hey, 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 oh, now. hey, I, I fucks with Taco Bell. I, I haven't had Taco Bell. It, man. I haven't had Taco Bell in I, I don't know. Right? I don't listen. I I'm telling you right now, word word to my nana B. Dong. I haven't had Taco Bell in about almost a decade. Shout out to my wife, Taco hey, Bell look, gang gang all day. Look, I, I didn't figure out I was lactose intolerant until I, I was in my thirties. My mom was like, Oh, you didn't know you was lactose? I'm like, What you mean? <laughs> listen. But being on tour <clears throat> Oh go ahead, I'm all, sorry. I was like, yeah. All I know is that I I, I tried those. They got they got them new stacker joints. Oh Lord! Oh stop! That shit ain't no nah, good for you, it, bro. It, it, that's that guy. Listen, that's it's that, like casein okay. and whatever that is. Oh. That addiction, that, that, that right. addictive, cheesy. Let me, let me break it down. Damn. 
You know, <laughs> you know what a crunch wrap supreme is, right? I do. Yo, uh, it's yeah. like it's like a crunch wrap supreme, but uh-huh. like a quarter of the size and like a little triangle. Yeah. And then you add the sour cream, dog. Let me tell you. And then the next day, Delicious. when I got migraines and oh, yeah, gas yeah, issues yeah. and all yeah, these other things, so so yeah. torn you pay for it the next day. You you the, the next day. The the bubble guts. Touring is that every night because you own like when you by the time That's you get true. out that show venue, what's open? Jack in the Box, McDonald's, places that are not places you go to if you value like if you don't get to a supermarket. Good luck. Or mm-hmm. you're in the or you're in the hotel and you don't get anything and you got candy bars and chips. That's what I'm saying. With like, soda. What? Well, I'm sorry. In your forties, in your twenties, run it all day long. Top Ramen was my friend. In thirties, yeah. Top Ramen, that sodium started making my heart beat faster. I was like, I am. Yep. So, so, so now I'm like, I recognize, especially because you know, this is the first year that I broke, or last year was the first one I broke it. But I was a vegan or, or a pescatarian for ten years. Ah. Well, I know how to repair my body when i've been doing like okay you you starting to eat like trash but on tour it doesn't promote that so right. i'm looking at it and i'm like damn so the industry stresses out these older rappers yeah the the this is just doing business in general will stress out any human being then you're eating bad now you're smoking now you're drinking now you're not sleeping because these shows end at like we did our show at 7 p.m we were done at nine. I was in bed at ten thirty. I was like, never. I'd have to have a show at noon to do this. Yeah. So I just started noticing all the <laughs> things that I was complaining about at these shows. I had the capability of doing something about it, so I chose to do something. It doesn't have to be the best thing, but I chose something. That's all. Hey, I but 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 when I see that, you know, the crowd that you had, like like it's the human element mm-hmm. like when you in in 2012 when you did the pay dues yeah yeah job, yeah yeah like the thrill like don't we need some sometimes we need that no? but you know what you know what this the, the, the reality of it i love people i love performing in front okay. of people and seeing faces that moment was over in a second <laughs> I, I campaigned for 97 days in a row Daily content, daily vlog, blogging, vlogging. I asked a hundred people why I deserve to be on paid dues before I even got the call from MERS. And then I did the show and it was over faster than a sneeze. And reality was a 15 minute set, but it was over with the moments over with. Mm-hmm. That's when I realized the same thing exists for an NBA player who wins the championship. Like all of this is practice. Yeah. All of this is practice. That show was practice for another show that I have to do that is going to be folks. But now all that practice allows me to be a professional from the convenience of my home. Are we ever going to see uh, Curtis King in the uh, metaverse arena? Oh, for sure. For sure. Because I've been getting into the metaverse my damn self. So, yeah. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to MC, uh, MC Shan is in the uh, metaverse Shout now. MC Shan in the, yeah, the metaverse. Yeah. As he should. Shan? MC yeah. Shan, yeah, yeah. Shout out to MC. I Shan. hope he has his teeth in. No, oh, come I on. Know, I don't know. If, I don't. I don't <laughs> know if he's. Got, yeah, I don't I mean. know if he's got them chompers in in the in in the metaverse. If Listen, you're that man. Close to the metaverse, you got back up. You we need Shan with the teeth. Shout out to Shan, man. All right, listen, I love Please Shan, but I need Shan. Shan, come on, OG. One time for your mind. Two. Two time for your soul. Two time for Look, teeth. That's hip hop. Let him let. That's hip hop right two there. Time, what you mean? Two time for you the teeth. Come as you are. Put him back hip-hop. in, pal. <laughs> come as you are. That's hip hop right there. I got, 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 got. All the other folks got teeth. I ain't, I ain't trying to have no teeth today. How about that? That's hip hop. He don't, nah, he don't do two fucks. He don't. But I, 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 I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful we live in a time now where it's like, yeah, that can that can happen in the metaverse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but hey, we're living in a time where Flavor Flav is clean, and I, I it, it warms my heart. Yeah, to see Flav clean, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff is happening that you know. Glad it is happening. Some stuff I'm glad that I'm wish it wasn't happening. But <laughs> damn it, we get to complain about it, and I'm lucky that it's happening. But uh, yeah, right. no, it, I don't. I have right now. My thing is let's let's get this maximize what we have right here because we ain't seen the tip of the iceberg of this. This is just showing me what may be possible. Seeing that, I was like. Mm. 
dog, y'all can't tell me nothing. Cause when I get this, when I get this popping off, you gonna have to like use the claw machine to get out and get me out this house. You gonna have to like what? And I love people. I love performing in front of people, but yeah. bruh, I don't like coming home at three in the morning and taking my son to school at six thirty. There is nothing. Uh, yeah, oh, I hear that. It, boy. And I DJ talk too. So it, come on, You're so you know. Zone. And, 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 yeah, and, that, I, I and know, sometimes bro. that's that's three a.m. when shows go according to time, but a lot of these shows will never be on time. So, yeah. and it's funny because yeah. I'm already starting to see I'm not getting booked for stuff, and that, that that's cool. This to me is there's a reason why I keep saying this stuff publicly because I need to put myself back myself into a corner mm -hmm. so that I can't wiggle out. This is what I'm. You gonna do it now? You have to do it. Mm -hmm. so, I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful because oh, man. so much is possible. So much this is possible. This is wonderful. Um, you know, there's a song, man. I, I, I really, you know, before before we dip, um, first of all, I mean, this this, this by far, I mean, I don't, I don't know by far, but th personally, I love everybody that comes on the show, all my friends, um, family. Uh, but this this episode right here, man, to me, I, I got to say I've learned the most. That's like, dope. Like and I, I'm all, I'm all about um about learning things you know from from each and every artist that comes on, um but man like just I look forward to I, I do I'm, I'm gonna be tr not I'm definitely gonna be standing in your ass B. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a, Curtis, a Curtis King stand and shit, man. Hey, wa wa welcome, bro. Like, yeah, like, I'm a part. I'm a part of the DIY, the DIY. DIY, that's right. Crew, that's yo, right. yo, react. We are down with D. You got, you got the merch for D DIY. Funny you said that. I just dropped new merch and nobody even knows I dropped it because I haven't put it out there yet. I got the Opify tees. So you go to CurtisKing.com. I got Opify tees. I got uh, new DIY your merch all the way around. But CurtisKing.com. But do you have the DIY? Yes, I do. I got some Ooh. DIY. DIY. I got go. all of that. For there sure. we go. Yeah, like we'll, we'll post everything uh, in uh, the show description and all that stuff. Man, like, man, like I'm definitely because just alone man do, do it yourself because we can man yeah because we, we can man that. right we can like e Yo, even, there's a song go ahead like, no i was gonna say there, there's there's even you know uh diy or uh i call it the diy or black card which is four gigabytes that it gets you an introduction to pretty much my entire discography um and, and it's a usb business card so it's like we just have to find different ways to provide value no other business is struggling with you know what i'm saying they're not struggling with how do i how do i figure out a way to monetize a part no <laughs> you just have to figure out where the people are at and what they value and uh meet them where they're at but also don't be afraid to make things available that um you know that they may see value in but you're going to ask about a specific song before we get to the song um you just mentioned something that kind of struck a chord hmm I have a very large background besides music in sales, mm -hmm. specifically direct sales mm -hmm. with a uh, <clears throat> couple of different companies. But they're, you know, what I learned in direct sales <clears throat> was value. And regardless of what you're selling, it was always about value. Mm -hmm. If the customer that you're dealing with or the person that you're dealing with sees the value in what you're selling, you could fucking sell anything. It doesn't yep. make a difference what you're selling. Mm, the person facts. in front of you needs to see the value in you and in what you're presenting to them. And that's your job. Artists don't. It's like they don't want to. So many artists don't want to hear this. This is your job to figure that's out. That's right. Like, because they'll be like, okay, well, how do I make them see that it's valuable? Like, I rap well. That's not good enough. Oh, I, I make I make beats that are you know better than everybody. It doesn't matter. What, right. what matters is the things that you don't want to talk about that really are who you are. And those are the things that, like, I read this in a book called Seducing Strangers by a Brilliant Marketing Mind. I forget the gentleman's name, but he said, if you want to understand this new modern lay of things, replace the words branding mm -hmm. with reputation mm. and then replace content with message. Mm-hmm. And see if that doesn't change 
the plans or the strategy that you're trying to align with what you're doing. So artists who are like, man, I just want to, you know, build my brand up. No, no. You want to build your reputation up. What type of things build up your reputation? Right. I got to make content. No, no. You have to distribute messages. What message do you want to distribute today? And so I think in that scenario where you're talking about folks who are like, who don't understand value, it's like, Doug, that's your job. And it may be a year, two years before you figure out like, oh, I thought they valued this. I thought they valued my voice as a singer, but really what they valued was like, yeah, how I speak for, you know, uh, uh, single dads or how I speak for whatever the case may be like you, you gotta like find that at the, at the essence, but that is our job. That is our endless pursuit as a business and even our pursuit to figure out when it switches, when it, when it pivots to something else, Mm -hmm. right? Eminem or Tyler, the creator couldn't be controversial the entire career. They had to pivot. That's their job as artists, as businesses, your job to figure out where everybody's at and where you're at in life and see how it aligns with the music you're making. So, yeah, I don't I don't make no excuses for that. That just don't make no sense to me. Right. Sorry about that. I just did a, a DJ EFN to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Shouts to Dream Champs. As <laughs> long as you uh, don't know Rick Ross, you just leave and don't come back. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> um oh, good. I know it's late where you're at, but I, I no, I genuinely appreciate you um asking some of these questions because it's, it's, oh, it's dude, this has I've been, been asked before. This, no, has been, this, uh, this has been this has been amazing. amazing. This has been amazing. Yeah, I mean, like you had the song. I mean, uh, I mean, it, like, f- first of all, the, f- the the very first song out the bat uh, um, on the um, extended worry warranty joint was, you know, <laughs> immediately was I was like, wow, this is what we're doing. This yeah. is. <laughs> and then everything else, it was just like uh, an amazing pause, a ride. Um, but but. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to let. I try to just let, let it just go. Just had to no, get right? one in there, right? You just had to. I said, "Pause, bruh." What the hell? <laughs> sometimes the pause makes it even more pause. Like the pause, right, no. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes because like, you because you know about you say some some real zesty shit. Yeah, right? like, <laughs> it kind of like puts it in bold. It kind of underlines it when you say that. Like, damn, I mean, yeah. I'm seeing that. I didn't even see that word. Now right. I see it differently. Right. Yeah, man. Sometimes I'm I don't even recognize this game the shit anymore, unless you man. say I'm too old to be playing this game. <laughs> Never too old. Never too old. It's part of my creativity. I ain't yeah, worried I about it. Um, but 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 you know what, man? Um, I I did want to uh talk about you know there, there's a record on the very first record, by the way, was fire. Thank but you. the record um that I we want we talked about uh was sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the song you're alluding to is called Sunshine. It's a song that um, I've been wanting to make, but I didn't know quite what it would sound like. It was something that was a very serious topic in that as a parent, you know, finding out my son was on the spectrum, uh, going through the initial you know, fears when he was speech delayed and really just honestly living in it in real time. Uh, it was why this song didn't get created, but I just had it in the back of my mind that one day I'm going to create a song that doesn't just paint it as like, you know, oh, everything's good. And it's like, you know, a perfect little Disney movie. Everything's perfect. It's like, no, it's some frustrating times. There's some really beautiful times There's some unexpected times. And so that song was um, dedicated to finding out my son was on the spectrum and uh, mm-hmm. coming to grips with not only what that means for me as a parent, for him as my son, for my wife, but also, um, you know, finding peace within it and also finding like, nah, like he was sent to the home he was supposed to be sent to, right? Like I have a line in there that says, uh, I was sitting in the living room. uh, I I was asking God why as I was sitting in the living room. Then I heard a man, so who'd you rather that I give him to? And Mm. like that's, Mm. That right there was the thing that, that that helped me to understand, like, he's going through the things that he's going through and the parents that he has are the perfect parents for him to succeed in all mm-hmm. aspects. So, uh, yeah, I, I made that song and that song, man, I've never had so many folks, probably one song. I had a song called Fuck Cancer, but this song definitely uh, had a lot of people saying, man, they were in tears. And, oh, you know, there's they no were question. I was on a ways it's crazy man there's yeah. no question on uh west side highway listening to it and um i think uh react and i because <laughs> we were 
game planning yeah. um, mm-hmm. for your interview. And I was like, man, do we bring it? I was like, he was like, yo, this got record, to. man. Got to. <laughs> got to. Yeah. And that's I, not something I'm shying away from. It's like, you know, no. I'm not, not embarrassed of it. It's something that is. I no, think and you shouldn't be, man. Right. Oh, it's it's wonderful. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful song, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, I have uh, I have three kids. You know, my daughter's uh, she's a little older. She's eleven. Right. And then I have two twin boys, um, who are three, and um, I just I God bless you, bro. Because yeah. I I don't I don't know like I. I wouldn't know how to handle it yeah. personally, yeah. you know, I, and uh, I, I, I'll be, I'll be it, real. With I, you. I, I know it either. can't be easy. Um, yeah. you know, I'm definitely listening to the song. Um, I could tell it's not easy, but I could also tell that, you know, um, it's, you know, for re- rewarding too. So, yeah. Well, I mean, um, neither is parenting. That's, that's the one right, thing I that's right, right. I was like, everything that they told us to be prepared for, he's going to require more patience. I'm like, that's parenting. He's right. going to require more attention. God mm-hmm. willing, that's what parents are supposed to do is give attention, right? right? So everything I kept hearing, yes, I know that it's it obviously has its extremes, but um, I've been told every crazy thing, man. I've I've had you know folks close to me that that have said like, oh, you know, before he had his diagnosis, oh, don't don't accept that. That that sounds like a curse. Don't accept that curse. And I'm like, it's not a curse. This is this nah. is this is his journey, and it is my job as a father to uh, guide him to the best of my ability to be as independent as possible and like who what better dad mm-hmm. to teach his son independence that's a whole fact bro that, that's right <laughs> and, and, and i can really i can really i can relate to that i'm not tripping on it yeah yeah i can i can really i can completely relate to that uh curtis because i had two sons uh both of them were speech delayed mm-hmm. and we had um but immediately um you know m- uh, my wife, she uh, she knew that okay, we need early intervention, and they came to the crib, and um, and it's all about parenting, man. We, you know, there was no shame in it. You know, I have a son, my eldest man, he's super brilliant, super brilliant and smart. Um, at BC, a junior at BC. Congrats, um, man! That's huge. Yeah, man. Um, he has he has, he has a, he's a stammer. He's a stutter. So he, you know, he was, you know, at five hundred four um, plan put in place um, for for kids who have disabilities, and mm-hmm. they, you know, they a lot super, you know, like time and and then there's services set up and stuff like that, for speech mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, but um, we dealt with it, man, and yeah. and and um, and I spoke, I, and I never said this, and he'll probably never hear this interview. <laughs> I mean, this, but you know sometimes we do like like because he's such um he's so, he's so like smart type certain introvert type thing and awkward that we look at each other my wife and I and we just like well he uh he might he might be on the spectrum yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. never know we didn't we didn't we didn't do we were so once this once the the issue of his stutter um, came to play everything else was kind of secondary because he was excelling in school right but socially he was super awkward and there are certain things you know um you know so mm-hmm. and then i have my youngest you know who has a, you know is an iep you know individual education program you know f- throughout his life and then and, and um he's at a school right now um that you know, specializes with kids like that and mm-hmm. and to get them prepared for, for college. And and uh, he is uh, super proud of him. He's done a 360, yeah. but you're right. Um, we were put in place as pa- parents. I, I can't think of my kids being with, any, with anybody, anybody else. Who, who else? Like, when you think right. about this, their sense of humor is when you think about, like you said, the things that they specialize in and mm-hmm. the areas that they do need your assistance in. There's a, these are usually things that you're pretty efficient at. Like, yeah. you're prepared to be the ones to fill in those gaps. And so, yeah. I and hear I see- you because I'm, I'm realizing, like, most of the parenting I'm, I think I'm doing, I'm doing more learning than I am teaching. See, mm-hmm. yeah, something, yeah. Every day, I'm, I'm still, Every I'm still, 
<laughs> still, I mean, so I'm like, the moment I'm like, oh man, this is way too difficult. Like, how are we going? He'll just surprise me with the way that he connects things. Like, he has such a f- phenomenal visual memory. Like, he's not in a position where he's able to spell his name, but he can get on an iPad and get on the maps and drive us from home to his school multiple routes i can tell the kid i say hey son go uh get on my i gotta get on my eye my eye my watch and i'll Mm -hmm. tell him i'll say uh go to basketball and he won't say it but he'll go to the to the to the watch and go to the nba logo and i'm like we've never had this discussion i'll say Mm. i'll I'll say pizza he'll go to the domino's app so it's like i there's areas that obviously i will need to help with his his uh his aba schooling is going to help with but i look Mm -hmm. at it and i'm like you know we're given we're given the proper challenges there's no mistakes in this at all and uh i'm i'm actually supremely grateful that you know god thought we was this strong like Mm -hmm. all right here it goes here's what i got prepared for y'all because every child is difficult to some degree oh yeah absolutely that's parenting so if this is the degree of ours i'm not comparing it to nobody else i just look at it like all right this is this was the delivery that came to our household mm-hmm. and this is the one we're gonna have for the rest of our lives this is our yeah. package cool let's figure this out and uh, maximize everything that we can but nah he's one of the kindest souls you know he, he, he got his moments he got his moments where he, he get a little, <laughs> a little angry but kind boy and um you know he's definitely somebody that i anytime i found myself getting low on motivation i don't have to look far i just look i look at him and i'm like it's time to get to cooking i still picture the day we got the good news it was me and your mama in my vehicle we were on our way to target for a clear blue i think i might have saw a rainbow in my rear view your mama took two tests and it was not a doubt that curtis king was about to be your father now i started stressing am i ready am i wilding out but see your mama rubber belly kind of calm me down i got no time to be selfish and bless your mama was in pain anxious as ever morning sickness every day it was hard but we didn't want to list our complaints to the doctor called and said you got a cyst on your brain but she still made your way into the world the cyst went down around nine months later I guarantee you that's your grandma's prayers Meet Nas, my boy, your son would raise Thank you You give me so much sunshine You give me so much right Say you give me so much right now Say you You give me so much sunshine My happy son My son Nas had a smile that could rule the world it was written in his name to be ill, I heard. Just like any Tyler, he would holler an Earl after another bottle of his formula swirled. Then we tried to feed him, he was picky about his textures. An OCD about the blocks with the letters. He would stare at the clocks, at the numbers, how eclectic, even stack up his toys like Tetris. Around three years, we started noticing a speech delay. Then the pandemic put delays on the speech delay. We bought him toys, but he didn't seem to want to play. He would just stand in the corner on his feet in days. That's when the therapist told us that we should test him. A few months later, found my boys on the spectrum. My first reaction was a lack of humility. Asking God why he had to have a disability. Say you, you give me so much sunshine. You give me so much right. Say you. All for the family, man. I, I, Absolutely. This is this Always. is this is why, man. Like, um, I looked at uh, just everything, um, all things Curtis King, and then and then React. That's right. <laughs> React said, uh, "Family man, period." Mm-hmm. And um, that's something we can all react, man. We applaud you, brother, and and we thank you so much for coming on to the Chop Shop. I uh, appreciate you having, uh, man. This was awesome. this was a fucking <laughs> man. This was a doozy. It was, man. <laughs> yeah, well, and for anybody else that want to try to get an interview, if you ain't going to be on this level with it, don't touch that DM. Don't hit me. If it ain't on the level of the chop shop. <laughs> oh, don't even man, bother. look at this. Don't That's it. Bother. Endorsed. Don't even Endorsed. bother. Like, if we can't just have this kind of just conversation. share it with your followers, though. Just <laughs> If we can't have this kind of, I will. I will. You hit me with the collab post. Like, if you can't have this kind of conversation, yeah. I don't want to talk about 
What do you think about what Nicki Minaj said about about uh about Vegas <laughs> Italian? I have no <laughs> desire. I do reaction videos, a part time job. I don't want to do none of that here. Yeah. I appreciate y'all having a conversation, even though I know it it it, it does center in a lot of on production. I mm -hmm. asked you beforehand. I was like. You know, I am pivoting out of the producer space and I don't want to send mixing signals. The fact that you, you know, you guys did the research. And we oh, had yeah. To, yeah. Absolutely. But you know what's crazy? Because because I, I was react. React told me uh -huh. because you guys, had, um, I guess you guys had a, the conversation about um, or I was not looking at the uh, the text at the time. And you said you want to pivot out of that. And I was like, fuck that. I'm like, this, <laughs> this motherfucker's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't, don't want to talk about music. It's like, like yo, be, and that's when, and that's when I sent them. That's when I sent them. I sent, I sent. In a, I'm like, yo, you, but your music, be. Remember, yeah. I was like, and you were like, and then, and then, and then, class, we, we, class was in session, people, and wow. and 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, this is this is the great thing about this show too, because you know we can pivot to um to real life situations and mm -hmm. and and just and and how to um to just uh take care of take care of the things your job and 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 living life day day by day, not getting ahead of yourself and um and man, thank you so much, man. I, oh, I can't thank sure. you enough. For thank sure. you so much, thank man. You for the invitation. Yes, yeah. sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Curtis King. Bitch, I'm really into it though. Bitch, I'm really into it though. You could not reach me on your tippy toes. Somebody stop me, bitch, I'm finna blow. Bitch, I'm really into it though. Bitch, I'm really into it though. I ran a bag up on them physicals. Then got it back, then I did the most I am not a household name, but I rent a home My 9 to 5 consists of making songs that are spiritual I used to make music inside a bedroom that was minimal In Downey, California